Okay. Hello, everybody. It's spooky time. <laughs> okay. Okay, the Ermagerd Mansion. I mean, it's nothing else, huh? Oh. Oh. What? Oh. The Ermagerd Mansion. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> it was the menu screen, right? You're not allowed on the menu. So, okay, backlog, save, load, journal, relationship, branching tree? Okay. Options, controls. Okay. Low. No, say. No, I don't know why I didn't want to save it so far. It was built for. Wait, I'm gonna. I don't know where the uh, volume should be. No, probably less than that. Wait. We're gonna go to options. We're gonna. Sorry! Rain is background music? Rain is background music. It is my spook. Wait, where's my little spook demo? Spook, 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 spook. <gasps> Spooks! One million spooky boys. Okay. Okay, apply. Okay. That's fine. In what world is rain a background noise? Uh, uh, like a music. Also, can I... Oh, window. Yes, apply. Yeah. Okay, it still takes away the thing. That's fine. Whatever. <clears throat> it was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth, Ermagerd of Luxburn. That's definitely pronounced something some other way, huh? Humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both are well known for, the, for their compassion and generosity never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small, sleepy village grew into a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady, Sh Lady, Lady Charlotte Ermiger. The mansion has stood since 1620, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady, Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. And that is where it began. When it began. Whatever. Nailed it. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, cries and howls that filled the nights and heresy of not a heresy, and hearsay of a mysterious woman roaming the hallowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, those stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that the stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar, Briar Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. 
No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. Should have been doing that on a creepy voice. Boop! Isabella. Are you there? Hey. Where are you? Okay. Okay. Now we know. Now we know. All up. These. Okay, that's fine. This can maybe be a bit higher? Wait. This fucks down a bit. Apply. Uh, oh, look, this, this time just runs on, huh? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? Hmm. Maybe it was a bit hasty on that one, huh? Boop! What do you mean, what's the matter? I mean, what's the matter, Rose? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Me, 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 me. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. I'm doing shit, Rose. Hey, Rose, I'm doing shit. Imagine if there was a jump scare on the settings screen. I would maybe literally poop myself. Oh my God, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? Yup, eat a dick, Rose. You chickened out. Shut up, Rose. Calm down, you know I take my promises seriously. That is something I now know about Isabel. I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And now we know we're in a horror game. <laughs> oh my god. So, you're. Hey, Rose, you're either gonna see the ghost first or you're gonna die. One or, one or the other. We'll see. We'll see, Rose. Fucking Rose. God damn it. And even if they are, which they are not. They can't do anything. Okay, well now you're dead. Now you've been upgraded from see a ghost to dead. You've been upgraded to dead. Well done, Rose. God damn it, Rose. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be Look listening or watching right now, and what? they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. So maybe Isabella gets to live because she fucking believes in ghosts, you know? No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Shut up, Rose. God, I'm gonna be so happy when the ghost eats you. Now I feel bad. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Yeah. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. But a number of them do? Like, a, n a number enough that you, you mention it? And I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. Another? I can feel it. That was one time, Isabella. Loosen up. S sorry. Yeah, I'll loosen up about you found a dead ass body, bitch. What are you talking about? Oh my god. Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Oh my god. Okay, see you. Bye. She hangs up before I can respond. So the body happens after they sell it, Mary. Rose, still charming as ever. Can't wait for her to get hit by that? a ghost. Oh. Oh, hey! Look up for my phone to see Rebecca. Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. Oh, Rose. Rose? The one you said who trained you for your job back when you started? You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Oh wait, mansion? That big spooky one you've been telling everyone about? 
See, what I like most, so, um, when I was like, uh, so yeah, these, these are the ones that I watch, I watch this to go to sleep, so I remember very little of it. Um, something that I didn't see was anything. I didn't see anything of this game because, uh, I've got glasses, and so I can't just, like, watch things to fall asleep because, like, my glass, my ding-dangs, my ding-dangs. Um, so I just had to listen to it. I didn't, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know that it had, like, motion in it. I didn't know that they blinked, that they're like real boys. Look at these real boys, huh? What the fu- Like, I feel like it has to have happened enough times. Okay. Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You didn't actually your went there? The thing. And you're going back? What the fuck? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. I'm gonna... Wait, no, wait! That's why it went back up again, like a dinkus. Wow. Oh, wait. Okay. And besides, a job is a job. Stop. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. Mm. Hello there, busy. <laughs> oh, what's up with the career day poster? <gasps> Why would you mean? Oh, <laughs> I don't like it. Oh my god. I mean, I guess even Slenderman can have a career. <gasps> Slenderman day job. <gasps> Slenderman's day job. Okay. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, better, better. Becca lets out a soft chuckle. Look at her little cheeks. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Cursed rumors and all. Good birds! Birds! Okay. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus! They huge never give bonuses bonus. like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate, I'm desperate, it's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. Oh, my made friends a lot. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca, I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She gonna get in trouble! Ugh. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you! I'm gonna turn up the music a little bit as well. Sorry that I keep fucking around with the, uh... With the everything. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it! <laughs> Here we go! <laughs> uh, I eat other things too, or you're not my mom! <laughs> other things I mean here's the thing I don't know I eat other things but I do know she's not my mom or do I she might be my mom okay um safe black I don't know that either. I eat other things too. Hey! I eat other things <gasps> too. Oh, wait. <gasps> what? Okay, so I got. Oh, wait. So, ranching tree. Oh, warning. This shows you the outline of your current cat chapter and its content that others might deem as spoilers. Do you want to proceed? Cancel, I guess. I like. I don't know why I like. It's like that others might deem as spoilers. We don't, but others might. Also, my ding-dang. 
music got too loud again. This is a... Uh, okay. Relationship. Ah! What up? Ah. So, she wouldn't have liked being called our mom. So, this is something that I do know. We're gonna play as all these people! We're gonna play as all these people! We're gonna play as Isabella, and Hannah, and Zachary, and Marianne, Rebecca, and Ashton, and Luke! And we're gonna play as them. Well, we're probably gonna play as all of them. Probably. Yeah, that makes sense. That's us! Uh, also, journal! Cool! Profiles. <gasps> Woo! Mariella? Ma no, Maria. Mariella! Fuck me! Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos. You're Jenna, you're two days, you're, you're like, you're a little bit shorter than me. You're a little bit shorter than me, but only by one. You're one shorter than me. Mwah. Good night, darling. Hope this lulls you to sleep. She's an estate agent. She's Filipino. She's a Roman Catholic. I like religion. I'm like, all right. Uh, fine arts undergrad. She likes cinnamon rolls. Good dogs. Good food. Good proced police procedural dramas. Yes. And teleseries, good. Comedies, good. Karaoke, good. She's the third child among seven. Daughter of a laundry woman and a je jeepney driver? What, what's a jeepney? What's a jeepney? She went to a public school and was an average student, but took to art easily. Eventually, she pursued a degree in fine arts, as encouraged by her father. However, when the man was diagnosed with a terminal illness, she had to stop studying to make money. It was Isabella's aunt who helped her. Aunt. I don't know why I said aunt instead of aunt. It was Isabella's aunt who helped her to get work overseas in order to earn more money than any local job could get her. Rose Cooper became her mentor as soon as she started as an agent at BRC. It's been five years since she met her neighbor, Rebecca. She met Ashton during an unfortunate incident involving her first sale at De Devon Court, Devlin Court, and later, Zachary through him. Don't know who those ding-dongs are. <laughs> okay. I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture and giving her the best, the best frown I can muster. The same one I'd use with my younger siblings when they were being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. You don't know that. You're yeah. just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Eh, I mean, okay. Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She went a little green on the last one. Oh yeah, she did, huh? She did, huh? I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't before want a repeat eating. of last year. You're... you got a bit of a robot voice sometimes, Becca. In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. <laughs> she shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny, distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words. She does not shut up. So this is better to let Becca talk until she's out of things to say. Jesus. But when she turns her attention back to me, there's only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than to me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. God. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. I already told you before. You're always free to reheat food in my fridge. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. Exposition. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ugh, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. Tropic? Uh, I'm pretty certain I could never take that offer. Don't know why I thought that was funny. Ever! 
It has nothing to do with pride. Simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. I want something like that to happen between me and Becca. I get you. We may argue a lot about small, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance at something behind me, snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my is students will be back there? any minute. Is there a ghost there? Bitch, is there a ghost there? Bitch, you gotta tell me if there's a ghost behind me. This goes for everyone on the stream. If there's a ghost behind me, tell me. And, if you want, just reassure me sometimes that there's not a ghost behind me. That's kind of cool. That's all right with me. If you, if you every so often just want to be like, just, just, just to like, soothe your, soothe your mind. There's no ghost behind you. I'm good with that. I don't care if it feels out of nowhere. No, actually, no. If you say it too many times, it might feel like you're screwing with me and there is a ghost behind me. How do I know there's not ghosts? Okay. Hello, Rise of Gaiden. How you doing, darling? <laughs> we can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet. With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins sifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to whatever's on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. This is precisely why I followed her here. If someone makes a habit out of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. Hey, uh, Debbie, for this one, uh, just like, you, just, just let them know that you're sick. Okay, what if I make my voice like, okay, that's a bit too much, Debbie. No, I think it works. I think this works for the scene. Okay. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I level her with a flat look. She's had a cold for a couple of days now. Something about strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Look who's being a stubborn asshole now. It's my friend. You shouldn't even be working right now. Becca. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile, and I can only sigh. I don't even bother. There's no stopping her once she's decided something. Defeated, I reach in my bag and pull out some of uh, pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. Oh, put bap, boop, bap, lorp. She looks at it warily as I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is one thing I'm not letting her have her way. I'm not one thing I'm not letting her have her way. I know. All right, okay, but don't fine. forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? I don't know if that, okay. Sure. There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to, to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Rebecca. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. I didn't call you mom earlier. Why are you calling me mom, bitch? Okay. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take it as a sign to finally end the conversation and my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. Whoa. I hit, oh, wait, does that mean that? Eh? <gasps> wait. Oh, no. Never mind. Never mind. I thought, oh, boo. 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 I thought that I was going to get. Boo. Lame. Boo. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out of the country, out, out in the country. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently, everyone in Luxburn City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for the locals to give you cautious sidelong glances. I learned that the hard way the first time I commuted there. And it only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. The weird sound in the background, huh? Even the news of it being renovated and placed 
I read the word placed for like that full like 10 seconds just going plucked? What's plucked? Hey guys, what's plucked? Why am I stupid? Okay. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up on the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the buildings shrink in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, and although a quick glance of my watch tells me there's still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Mose did ask me to review the monument and documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. Life always has ways of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway. Rose? Stop by the Ash of Team Lux City! Guess again. Hi, Ash! You dinkus! That voice. Ash. Bingo. I remember very little about this game. What I do remember is Ash. Hey, what's up? He's a dinkus! Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. It's so cool, man. You mean that thing with Zack? Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? <laughs> Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's Ermengarde. open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? Ermengarde. You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose Ooh, is already fast. there, but yeah. I see. Oh, shit. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Don't be a shit up. Ash chuckles, and I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. I'll see if I can pick you up. Yep. Bean face. Whatever. Bye. Whatever. Stupid. Stupid asshole. God damn it. Always teasing me wherever he gets a chance. I'll show him who's tough. Oi, Faye. Ah, journal updated, journal updated, journal updated. What day is it? Ah, Friday, October 21st. Before, ooh, there's days before, whoa, sorry. Sorry, that just says help. That just says help a lot. That just says help a lot. Hmm, hey, why? Why we got that? Why that there? Yo. Yo, sorry, excusey, excusey, what that? Before going to the Ermagerd mansion, is it, oh no, I thought that was as her, Never mind. Before going to the Ermagerd mansion, Isabella Santos dropped by the Sip Goretti High School to check on Rebecca Gales. The former reminded the latter to take her flu medication before, uh, medicine before leaving. On the way to the mansion, Isabella received a phone call from Ashton Gray. Gray? Dre? Is that, uh, she, what the fuck is that letter? Dre? Whatever. Reminding her of Zachary Steele's movie premiere that night. It takes more than a few minutes until I reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. Yet despite all this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of the leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. While out in some village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. It's uncanny. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Who planning to go inside that place, Missy? I am. The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum. Bleededly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace. And I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. Uh. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house 
Never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. Yeah, man. Maybe they just didn't like it? The taxi driver did it. The taxi driver did it. He wanted the he wanted the mansion. He done did it. You never know. He drives off after, but what he said has left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice anyway. If I want to get that bonus and commission one way or the other, I gotta sell this property. The door is jar. Is it a door? Is it a jar? When I get to it, however, while my own copy, however, when my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand, Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. You may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her as someone careless. <laughs> Maybe it looks fine. Entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook, cranny, crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. <laughs> Why? If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them about uh, telling them and leave this place alone. Some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed again. Rose? Call out. Has she already been eaten by the fucking ghost because she said ghosts weren't real? Never say ghosts aren't real. Hey, th look. I don't know how much I believe in ghosts. Maybe I believe in ghosts real bad. Maybe I believe in ghosts not at all. Ah. What I will never say is I don't believe in ghosts. Ghosts might be around. You know, ghosts might be around. There could be ghosts. Who am I to say if there's ghosts or not, bitch? What I do know is bitches who say that they there is no ghost get et by ghosts. Maybe I believe in ghosts. <laughs> don't, never say you don't believe in ghosts. Bastards. I call out. Rose, I'm here. Where are you? I don't like that there's an echo. I mean, it's a weird echo. They've not done like an echo to the voice they've just been like oh what's an echo when you hear the words coming back at you they've taken her words and just shifted them and made them a bit quieter which is not really how echoes work they should have used an echo that whatever i'm a I'm bit hi i'm like i'm i'm an audio editor do things less weird my voice echoes softly throughout the hallways oh who am i kidding in a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. She got at by ghost, bitch. Bitch, never say they ain't no ghost. You're gonna get at by ghosts. Don't get at by ghosts. Never say there ain't no ghosts or get at by ghosts. What do you mean it's not been recognized? We're just talking a while ago. Look, I hate being that person that like gets annoyed by things. Like, I'm not here to be like, ugh, these are things that everyone should know because like some people don't know the thing, but like, it's not a huile. A while is two words. A while is two words. I don't have many things like this. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, anyone who thinks that whom and whom, like who and whom are, is like an important thing can like eat my entire butt. People were like, ooh, do you not mean she and I uh, instead of me and her? Fuck you, I don't give a shit. It's a while that gets me. And also the weirder one, the weirder one that gets me is um, subconsciously. No one says subconsciously. They always say unconsciously. It's like, oh, I unconsciously went to the, went to the front garden. I'm like, no, 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 you didn't. Were you asleep? If you were asleep and went to the front garden, then sure, you unconsciously did that. Otherwise, you subconsciously did it. I'm okay. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Right? Or... Or 
maybe go stand here as talking and spirited her away, huh? Me? No, Isabella, don't be dumb. She couldn't have been at by ghosts. She pro It got darker. Is that moving now? Why is that moving now? Was that moving before? Was that moving before? Hey, bitch, was that moving before? I don't like this game. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. That was low before it was a higher. Before it was the number you have dialed. Now it's the number you have dialed. It's getting more ominous. But to no avail. Don't you get more ominous on me, you rat bitch house. Yeah, boy. I have a real bad feeling about the. I have a bad feeling about this. Now it stops. Okay. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. That's not how echoes were. Okay. Come on, Rose. This isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. Didn't like that I got a note then. Cool. Eh, this is not gonna work. The place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Shut up! I take a couple steps forward. I notice something move above the grand staircase. I didn't see something move. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Oh yeah, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. She got et by ghosts because she said ghosts don't exist, bitch. Going desperate, I tried to contact her number again. Come on, give me something. Please, Lord. Get out of my face, bug. Oh, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? I don't want it. I don't want it! She doesn't respond. There's also heavy static coming from her side. It's getting starker. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? I'm stuck getting darker! Oh, it got brighter! A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm out. Hey, what's that noise? Hey, what's that one, huh? Hey, what's that noise? What? The attic? Why? I got cut off. Weird, huh? Uh, do I need to go there? No, you're good, hon. But deep inside the mansion the attic is... Wait, no, with how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. Yeah, that's it. Why is she here? And of all the places, she just has to make me go and fetch her from the creepiest room of this place. She's doing this to get back at me for being late. Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. <laughs> it bounces out to the two major wings of the mansion, the east and west wing. West wing. East wing. There are two attics here, one on each side. But the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So I head towards the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air with every step. Thank God it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old the place is, there are no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passage. 
And they didn't bother to add one here when they renovated. Oh, why they didn't bother to add one here when they renovated escapes me. Ugh, they did to the rest of the house. Small bedroom welcomes me at the end. Looks exactly as it did the last time I've been here. Full of dust. Worn out and faded by time. Odd, I thought that they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Ugh, cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. More pressing matters rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, it could have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of the estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe the phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got her. Oh, shut up, brain. You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. If she's not here, where is she? <laughs> no, I'm good. Hey fam, I'm good. What was that? That's it, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the start, but nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. Ooh, she said a swear. And I think I'm cuckoo, because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish bank player can't she believes. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, ma. Uh -uh. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who's more fucking realistic to tour people around the haunted ass house. This bitch gets it. Hey. This bitch gets it. Isabella? You're all right. You're all right, bitch. Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just to check. Huh? What's this? Whatever it is, don't pick it up. My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. There's clearly something on the floor, and there it shall stay. Looks like... A letter? And then I didn't pick it up, and the game was over, and everything's fine. Lying on the ground, just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity. Hate me. I lean down and pick it up. If there, if something, if something appears underneath that fucking bed, I will shit on, well, myself first, then everyone else. I will go on a shitting spree. The likes of which this world has never seen. I will go on a shitting spree. You fucking mark my words. Strange. Fuck you, under the bed. I don't recall seeing this last time I was here. If anything appears under that bed, I'm going to go on a shitting spree. A few days back, me and a few of the other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for today. I've been the last to look inside. No, I've been the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have left it in this room since then. Did Rose leave it for me? Was she here a while ago? You you figured out what a while was spelled like that time. I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks ancient. Paper's so thin and rough, and rough that I'm worried it'll fall apart if I so much as touch it. With great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. What? Yeah, 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 what? yeah, 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 that's about right, that's about right, that's oh about right. Oh my god. Help me, 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 help me. Well, we're about here. We're about here. We're about here, where we first get the letter. Great, 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 great. Nothing but the words help me fills the page. All of it seeming written with a crimson shaded pen. Probably, huh? If something is under that bed when we go back, I'm going to go on a shitting spree. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just goes on and on until Send this to five people or else. That's or probably else just ketchup. Or else what? 
As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. It is 100% a chain letter. It is a hundo- Well, weirdly enough, it looks like this- Like, this part looks Like, I don't know if you can see it in the thing. This one's weirdly a bit lighter. Don't know why. This one's just, like, a little bit lighter. It's just like, ah. Oh. Blood. This one, we ran out of blood and we went to catch up. This one, blood. This one, catch up, blood, catch up, blood, catch up. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. I don't want to click. I don't want to click. I will go on a shitting spree. Folding the paper in half the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. And as I feel the vision covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh and bone and all manner of things one is not meant to see. But it boo, it's too much. But it do. Unread text found. What? Well, that's too much. Wait, what do you mean unread text found? What does that mean? <coughs> Wait, what? Oh, did I press skip by accident? Okay. All of it's too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Yeah, I don't like the lack of toenails. Not gonna lie, that's my least favorite part. My least favorite part is the lack of toenails. You know what toenails are invented for? Keeping all the goop in. Keeping all the toe goop in. Keeping all your little sensitive nerve endings just nice and protected. Just nice and protected. Also, don't like that we've just got little parts of our bodies that they're just like, oh, well, the nerves end here. So, like, that's that's the owl part. That's the owl part. No, there's some skin. Like, this is skin. This is some not skin. Skin. Not skin. Skin. Not <laughs> Look, I turn into fucking... I turn into the goddamn scat man when I'm scared. Oh, no, that does sound like I'm pooping everywhere. That's very relevant. <gasps> I turn into the scat man in so many ways. Cause I start doing the zappity zoop zap zorp and I also poop myself. God. What a small world. Okay. <laughs> I mean. I need to face it! Whoever, whatever these people are, I need to face it! And if I'm gonna die, if they're gonna kill me, at least I'll know what my killer looks like. A cold comfort. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of courage I have left in me and shift my gaze upwards. <laughs> oh, it looks bad! Oh, it looks bad! It's not better! No! Ooh! Ooh, but you but up doop zap zip but up a doop but up without thinking I scrabble towards the door, please do! Why are you so goopily? Why are you so goopy? I struggle to open it, but it won't budge. Stay away! Go away! Please, Lord! Make it go away! Why now? Why won't it open now? My heart sinks as reality dawns in. I'm locked in. Locked in with that thing. Let me out! Let me out! Lord, please, let me out! Sully approaches me as I wrench the knob, doorknob violently back and forth. Oh, what? Whoa, 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 No, 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 That was bad. I didn't like that. Oh, good. I got two achievements. Fucking what? What was that one? Win a quick time event. Great, thank you. Hey guys, I got one. Oh, win a quick time event without skipping. Huh, cool. Oh, wait, no, wait, was that a different one? No, okay. Yes! The door finally swings open and I could not have been happier. 
Wasting no time, I leap out of the door and don't look back. My feet pound against the floor in rhythm with the loud, fast beating of my heart. By the time I run past the hallway and find myself atop the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight like it's about to burst. But there's nothing compared to the feeling of hope that the sight that the pfft, compared to the feeling of hope the sight of the exit gives me. Racing down the god, there's so many clips. Oh god. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and my shoe slips and I find myself falling. Till the back, my back hits the- Did I kill her because I saw it? Oh god. Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. <gasps> no, thank you! My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I try and- f as I fight to stay conscious. No. Go away. <sighs> the last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Well, looking for our missing co-agent, Isabella Santos, found a mysterious lab there in the Irming 8 Mansion's attic. Driven to fear by what she read inside, thinking the place is cursed and... Uh, thinking that it's the place's curse at work, nailed it. She hurried to leave the place, only to meet... Goddamn intro if it's the murder of me. Look at all these cuties! Oh. What? Don't do that! Get out, bitches! Like, I don't know what I am. I'm like, I, like, 
What's a candy that either people are like, hey, this is the best candy in the world, I love this candy, or they're like, this is a trash candy, <laughs> no one should ever like this candy. Cause I'm that one. <laughs> I'm a divisive candy. I was gonna say like candy corn, but I don't think like candy corn, cause like people are more like either candy corn is the worst or candy corn is exceedingly average. <laughs> Almond Joy? Almond Joy's I See, I don't get, we don't get Almond Joy's over there. I don't know if I've ever had an Almond Joy. Have I ever had an Almond Joy? It sounds like something I'd enjoy. I'd Almond, en Almond enjoy it. Nailed it, fucking nailed it. No one else can tell me different. Okay, I nailed it. Buzz breaks the silence. <laughs> nailed it too hard. I nailed it too hard. I start to rouse, <laughs> pulled into consciousness against my own will, but Oh, I've never felt this tired before. <gasps> this very good dog! <gasps> okay, dog's gone. I had, I had the saddest time. The dog left me and I miss the dog now. Okay. I just want to sleep, but the incessant buzzing, poking, and prodding isn't letting me. My old mattress may not be the comfiest of places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Am I in a coma? Five more minutes, Becca. I swat away at what is nudging but persistently at my side. Can I just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? How does I work hard when I'm up? I lightly taps my cheek. Something cold is suddenly being pressed into the back of my head. The icy sensation slowly spreads throughout the area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. Isabella? <laughs> The fog immediately lifts from my mind the moment I recognize the voice and my eyes snap open. Oh, hey girl, hey. Oh, you didn't get at my ghosts. That's good. I still stick by what I said. Never tell people that you don't believe in ghosts or you get at by ghosts. I still think she's gonna get at by a goddamn ghost. She's gonna get at by a ghost. You, y'all fucking, it. bitch gonna get at by a ghost. Bitch gonna get et by a ghost. I'm just saying, you say that ghosts don't exist, you get et by ghosts. Hello there, Craig, how you doing? There, looking down at me is Rose. Another woman loaders beside her, but my attention is far too focused on my co-agent to even ask why there's someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she's keeping a straight face, or trying at least. Oh, thank you for the delicious bitch. Oh, please stay in the cup. It stayed in the cup for the fucking first time ever. Every time, every time that bits come in, they fall, they come up, I'm like, here they go, bzoop, and then just leap out the cup and into the abyss, I guess. It's so much. Can't help but feel bad for making her fret. A wave of dizziness washes over me as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Luckily, the feeling subsides after a few seconds until only a mouth throbbing somewhere in the back of my head remains. With a little assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. She hands me an ice bag. Oh wait, I can turn up the volume again and dance, dance, dance. Put the volume, bloop. Uh, first where I suspect a small bump. It turns me an ice bag. Can you get us for me to press it where I first press the small bump is up for the light eight indicator. All right, Isabella, where are we? Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. I would like to be a voice actress, guys. I nailed it. My dreams and aspirations are to become a voice actress. Look how hard I'm nailing it. <laughs> God damn it. The Ermengarde Mansion. Ermengarde. Why? Ow. My head. And the date today? October 21st? Rose. Last one. Can you count to 15 in reverse order? No. 15, 14, 13, 12 teen? No. That's wrong. Are you stupid or concussed? I like, I, I worry that that's not a concussion thing, that she's just gone a bit dumb. Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is in any way serious. Oh, are we now? This time, I curiously regard the woman standing beside Rose. It's impossible to overlook her well, with the way she towers over us. Nah, no, bitch, don't. No, bitch, don't. <laughs> and here I thought Rose is already tall. I mean, maybe if it was like boop, 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 boop. No, she, she's the same height. You're the same height. You're like the same height. Shut up. Who is she anyway? One of the cl remaining cleaning crews? 
with how primly dressed she is, I don't think anyone would want to clean a suit, an expensive suit. I uh, want to clean in a suit. Expensive suit at that. The gloves alone must have already cost a fortune. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an almost unreadable expression before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does so. She may be far from a cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like our supervisor doing evaluation. Just do it, please. I eye them most warily, but recite everything she has asked. Rose rele releases a breath of relief once I'm done. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you alright? You probably should. Exasperation soon replaces the dull ache. The memory's a little fuzzy, but the attic and... There... there was someone, Rose. In the attic. Someone? You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. The boss sent a few of them back this no. morning for some last minute... No, not any of those. They're... ugh... I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Both Rose and the lady look at me like I've just grown another head. Did I say something weird? Let's quickly cast an apologetic smile at the woman before the awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman's smile, the same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should so show this to troublesome Clyde. No, I should show this to troublesome Clyde, or just to avoid trouble in general, she advised. Oh, okay, get what you mean. Okay, that was okay. It was also the same one she gives me when I'm done something particularly absurd that may cost us to lose a potential sale. Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes both my shoulders, gently squeezes, and with as much patience as she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really all right? I saw what spooky happened? lady. I, I don't know. I know. It's all a bit blurry. It was a spooky lady. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And, and there's whoever it is. And I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh, oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open. We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose. Perhaps it is a concussion. Well, perhaps it I'm is, sure lady. you feel fine. We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important sale because of a minor bump in the head. I just fell down a billion T stairs. I'm fizzity fine. An extremely minor, fast concussion. I've had worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also the part where I might lose the bonus, BRC promise, but that's completely besides the point. Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return the cold compress to her and push myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase's railings to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-OK. -okay. Oh my god. The two of them exchange a worried glance, and Rose assumes a complaint of a contemplative look. Nailed it. I bite my lower lip in anticipation. If she says no... Right, you in. A smile threatens to slip out for if me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. Okay. No questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> Suddenly a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer, interrupting our banter. Our banter. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Okay, yeah, she, okay, she, she, she's, she, 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 she real, she real intimidating, she real, real intimidating. But not in a scary negative way, far from it actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect her. Nailed it. In a different world, a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. At her laughter of response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. 
Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usual, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. McCulloch! It's McCulloch, not McCulloch. It's McCulloch. That's McCulloch. <gasps> Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. Okay. Oh. Oh, hey. I like your, I like your shit. I want to call that number so bad. Nope, that's a lot of money, huh? She hands Rose her business card. What happens if you email it? Mm, it's X Man. Probably doesn't exist. I want to email it. Okay. The words interior designer catch my eyes before my partner flips it over. Oh, someone probably interested in the mansion for its 17th century influences then. I won't hold it against her though. Despite what the he hearsays and, remain and remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to the past feeling ap appealing. I can do words. After all, with what it offers, this place could also be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please... Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me, and I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. This is the Ermengarde Mansion, mm. right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Uh, save. Bloop. We'll check with our supervisor. That's what you're supposed to do. She like that? She like that? Yeah! That's good. Cool, Marianne's okay with that. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or of confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked with the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today is the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. I if you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly, <laughs> seemingly in deep thought after I finished. She appears to be a very reasonable person anyway, given the proper explanation she'd surely understand. I thought something looked odd when I arrived here. <sighs> Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to end it. Both Rose and I breathe, 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 breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gave me for giving me a good, for, for she gives me for doing a good job. And I can't help but swell with pride. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to her Luxburn, Luxburn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if, for some reason, something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. That's a whole new level of unfair. We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCulloch returns, looking a little flustered, but with an apology clear on her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You can stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance at her wristwatch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry! We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with, with it a stillness to keep me company, neither welcoming nor comforting. 
What's in my journal? Oh, ooh, there's more on this day. Ooh. Rose Cooper, along with a woman who introduced herself as Marianne McCulloch, found Isabel Santos lying unconscious in the mansion's foyer before the open houses start. Unable to recall what happened prior, Isabel insisted on working, despite her co-agent's worries about her well-being. <laughs> Amazing. Alone like this, it's impossible not to think of what really happened. I wish the memory wasn't as elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after being her after having heard all those tales about this place? Yeah, probably. Probabobs, huh? Probabobs, huh? I want to think of it as such. Probs, huh? Probs, huh? Oh, sweet hot probs. Better to think of it as such, so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my mind begs to differ. And if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's in this house, and I don't want to know. The keys Rose have, have the keys Rose have just handed me dig into my palm, and its jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I'm clutching it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer closer to my body, I exit the house to get what Rose has asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. I mean, that's not great. Sorry, a hot what? A hot what? Fuck you. A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status, all dressed to the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying colors, compose the medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy feathered hats on their heads. Really hope there aren't any magpies living nearby like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day. They're murmuring among themselves, looking at the estate's facade appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has the superior architecture. But most of it stops as Rose calls for attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but eh, what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. Hi! We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. I keep forgetting it's not first floor, second floor. It's ground floor, first floor. Just, hi. Hi, America. I'm here for you right now. That's not, that's not a first floor. You've got a ground floor. The ground floor is the first floor. Right? Like, I'm fine if you want to call it ground floor and then second floor. Not ground floor, first floor. That's not. What are you talking about? Shut up. After hearing this, a few wander to me. They're mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Miss McCulloch also joins our group. What really catches my eye is the elegantly dressed pair she approaches. Oh hey, it's Tits McGee and Draco Malfoy, I guess. It's so nice to finally meet you. When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you. Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's but like that's not the first. It's not the first floor. Whatever. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, cool. So he's a pervert. His thing is that he's a pervert. That's a pervert voice. Go oh, away, Draco. You know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. Uh-huh. Yeah, that have to be the clients that she was talking about. Might have seen their faces somewhere before. Some magazine or television? I can't remember. But then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular enough, they aren't as dressed- oh, For people who are popular, though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and in their simplicity, the couple stands out. 
The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in any group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind though. And if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I think they'd brother and sister if it wasn't for their public defense display of affection. Weird thing to say! Their matching rings on, the fing on their fingers just cement that they are, indeed, a couple. My only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. Do we get these guys? Fuck you, fuckers. I want to see them. Uh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Whatever, I don't actually give a shit. Couple or not, what's important is we get the deal closed before the current owners can even think of canceling the listing. I just hope one of the people in Maya Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. Well, journal updated. Today marked the open house of the infamous Ermagerd Mansion, open to the public for the first time in years. Luxburg's, but Luxburg's most esteemed and prominent personalities gathered to catch a glimpse of the 17th century property, including Luxburg's most well-known couple, Luke and Hannah Wright. When they are whispering among themselves or going ooh and ah over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went to the history of the place, I answer them all. More than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture, mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxburg knows about Some it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass... Thingy, Lovely lady. Colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Lovely lady. Lovely lady. She's down as lovely lady. Okay. Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengard. Ermengard. The mansion's current owners have specifically Stupid. requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I've stopped talking, her attention is already elsewhere. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Isn't it. this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I am so Audi 5000 on pervert Draco Malfoy. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. <laughs> it's pervert Draco Malfoy and I'm out, Mr. in Grey. Lovely lady and dude. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, Mom. He's pervert Draco Malfoy! But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. The rest of the conversation gets lost in the clatter of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. And there's a murder in here. Oh, there's too many knives and a trap door, and isn't that gonna come- That's gonna come back to bite me in the vagina at some point, huh? It's gonna bite me right in the puss. Oh, God. Okay. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put in, in retaining the groom's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room in particular looks amazing, like the ones I've only seen in fairy tale books. And mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soot and tar staining on the bricks, and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning will be, they still manage to pull this off. Or make it look presentable at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. What's in the hatch? I mean, no, if it's the highlight of the room, it's not going to be 5,000 dead bodies. Okay. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. I hate your pervert smile. 
It's the first time the guy in grey speaks up. Mr. Luke Wright, my memory supplies in the forms of that they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time, something lights up in his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. His pervert, pervert, pervert eyes. What's so interesting about a basement? I don't understand rich people. That's where perverts like to do their thing. That's what the, where you store bodies. That's where perverts like their bodies to be stored. Or in the attic. It's basements or it's attics. Or it's their mother's bedroom. It's either, it's either basements or attics or their mother's bedroom that has been untouched for years. Perverts love this shit. And not like the cool fun perverts, you know? Like, I'm talking like murder perverts. Not like, not like, oh, he's such a pervert, whatever. That's fine. Murder pervert. Fuck you, I hate this guy. <laughs> I hate this guy. I feel like he's gonna murder me. And I feel like he's gonna get a lot of sexual pleasure out of it. Ugh. Right now, he just gives me the impression of a child who's seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see children out that way. My younger sibling, siblings especially. On a grown man? That's, that's kind of funny. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Truly? And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity that's in the room. That's good wine stuff. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. <laughs> Didn't Shut you up. say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. Is it a vineyard? The outside stuff? And like, the inside's like the one? You Whatever. know we're going to need space for that, darling. Uh, this isn't big enough. If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he's started to show interest, if only a little. Sunman's sofa stuff and... I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with a sincere interest. Skewer. Can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of our tour goes off without a hitch. The more th after more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room on the ground floor, and our that's a lot of rooms, and are heading to the parlor. Funny, the first time BRC had us survey the property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care, no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over a possible sale. Oh, look at this nice room. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It starts off with small goosebumps on my s Why do I have to say that I like things? As soon as I like things, it gets taken away from me. I don't like the noise. So I so, so I'm scared of feeling like you're being watched intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. A chill settles down my spine, making me feel sick, and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I can't do this. I need to sit down a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting a break anyway. If I can just- Excuse me? Everyone? We- we will be taking a 15-minute rest here before we visit the first That's floor. That's a long rest. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while I retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold. Just don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while, the same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer, until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? Hi. Yes, ma'am? Oh, look at you. Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. I mean, I could be proven wrong, but she seems genuinely nice. <laughs> Like she seems like she's genuinely kind of a nice bitch. Okay, she's she's probably not. She's probably like a mass murderer. Whatever. What a hard worker. Anyway, 
Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. Hana. Fucking Hana. I just wanted to ask, Hana. how soon Tash. are we able Shut to move up. in? Your name is not Hana. Your name's Hannah. Leave. My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expectantly as I struggle to cough with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... You see, but we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... Oh, she stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, her tight smile... Well, with her tight smile, she looks as if she's tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. I don't know, maybe, maybe she's maybe she's an asshole. And just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. Why would you fill it up with cats? I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm yeah. sure there's Aww. more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Good bitch, never mind, back on track. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary I'd soon. I'd fill it with dogs. I'd fill it with dogs. I'd fill it with one million dogs. One million dogs. One million dogs. And it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. You don't say. I, we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Go away, Leave pervert. Leave me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> I hate this pervert. I hate this pervert. What would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I try not to win, scissor when her nails dig into my shoulder. Oh no, maybe she's not cool. Damn it. I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss McCulloch, who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shuffles through the bunch. Oh man, Russ is going to be angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella! Isabella. Right, yeah. right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. No, never mind. She's an asshole. Shit, come on! It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll Ugh, be more than happy mind. to put in a good word to your superiors too, and... What's this? Oh, no. Oh god, achievement, dealer's horror prop, cool. Their eyes all got a lot more intense. Also, look at our like little snake boy. You'd be a very pretty lesbian, but it's a very pervert pervert as it stands. Cute lesbian, bad pervert. <laughs> a look of confusion and disgust appears on her face. Turning to her husband, she merely shrugs in reply. That's, uh... An interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling, buttercup. Art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. I mean, you're talking about the letter. I don't think anyone's like, Oh yes, look at your weird art that you put in this stack of paper. What are you talking about? Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh... What do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. What the fuck are y'all talking about? You don't see a letter that says help me written on it a thousand times and be like, oh, look at this weird art, huh? That's some strange art. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. No one would in... Uh, why do you guys keep thinking this is art? Why you guys are so fucking I'm weird. quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this... 
form. It's my turn to be puzzled. What the fuck do you mean? Why was it I double checked everything? Are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong, but I don't want to mess, mess this up. But the way Mam Hannah's leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. Is that what the intonation was? Okay, whatever. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a single piece of paper. Oh, hello there, Lara. Oh, thank you so much for hosting, you angel. Welcome to... What the fuck? There's like... There's a lot going on. We got this girl. I thought that she was nice for like a hot minute and then she turned into a massive bitch. And then we've got fucking pervert Draco Malfoy. There's a lot going on. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I only stare down at the paper, at the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle in my grip as my breathing grows labored. Dread quickly fills my mind. Isabella? Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more to say that no, I'm not all right. I want to leave this place because I remember everything as clear as day. Don't show me the thing again, please. The letter and that woman in the attic. Please don't show me the woman again, please. It's real. The letter. I I'm sorry. I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. How do I even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Ooh, should I even tell them? What? I mean, I don't know. Should I show it to Rose? Should I show her the letter? Okay, what would showing her the letter accomplish? Be like, I found this weird letter, huh? And then she'd be like, Hmm, okay. And then don't show her the letter and be like, uh, no, what? What? That makes us weird and suspicious. Oh, wait, oh, it said show it to five people. <gasps> oh, no, but I like Rose. Wait, no, do I? No. Yeah, fuck Rose. <laughs> no, wait, okay, wait. <laughs> I forgot about the show it to five people. That's why they're calling it Chandler. Okay. Do I like Rose? Okay, well, three people have already seen it, you know? Do I want to make Rose, like, do I want to fuck her, her day up? Um, do I like Rose? Are there people that I like less? I've not met anyone else. It's difficult to know. I want to... What if I don't show her the letter now and then if, no, it, won't, it probably won't give me an option later being like, hey, whose day do you want to fuck up, you know? Do I like Rose? Well, she said that, she, she says she doesn't believe in ghosts. I'll show her what a fucking ghost looks like. Hey, bitch. Yeah, she didn't like that. <laughs> Oh, no, no, that was Marianne. That was Marianne. Uh, never mind. Oops. Um. <laughs> Why have I done this? No, should I not? Should I not show her the letter? It's kind of... Mm. Oh, whatever. Look, whatever. Look. Wait. Mm, wait. Mm. What if I just don't show it to five people? Then will I die? Well, am I gonna die? I don't wanna die. Bitch said that she doesn't believe in ghosts. She'll be fine. I blurted out before I could think twice about what I'm gonna say. Rose, we need to get out of oh, here. Oh, no, place that's not what I... I meant just be like, look at this weird letter I found, not everything is ghosts. Whatever, it's too late, whatever. Or is it too late? You go back. Oh, okay. Mm, uh, mm. I feel bad.
Fuck it. Oh, whatever. Rose casts a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are still engaged in conversation with their peers, but those curious enough to turn their heads in our group's direction have given their trademark, their trademark saleswoman smile. A tight expression is on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella, we've already had a conversation about this weeks ago. Those are just stories. And I'm telling you that it's not. I saw something in there. It's not, it's not human at all. I thought it was just nothing, but isn't this letter proof enough? She gently reaches out to pluck the paper off my hand. Without even taking a glance at it, she folds it back neatly. Oh, well, she's not even gonna read it! Look, I'm really getting worried ah, about you. No, fuck it! If she's I not gonna read it! I open house through, but your condition is more important. No, she's not gonna read it! No, fuck it! No, what? No, okay, if she's not gonna read it, then, like, fuck it. No, we're not gonna show her the letter, because now, then we'll, like, I don't know. No, if she's not gonna read it, then she's not gonna see a stupid ghost and she's just gonna think we're crazy. She thinks we're crazy anyway. Fuck, don't show her the letter. Rose, I... Marianne apparently is super into us not showing her a thing. Fine, whatever. The words are stuck in my throat. I want to tell her, I really do. But is she gonna believe me? She already dismissed me earlier. She's not gonna even look at the note and therefore be able to see a ghost. It's a concussion, she said. It's not. There really is something in this house, in the attic, in the letter. It's gonna go after us. Please believe me. me. Is Isabella all right? Isabella. Adam's hand of, hand of voice breaks through the haze, beginning to cloud my mind. Rose is looking down on me, worry etched into her features. I didn't even notice when she removed the wrinkled paper from my hands and pushed me down to sit on a nearby chair. From the edge of my vision, I could also make out Miss McCulloch asking a passing food waiter, a server, for a glass of water. Through it all, Mr. Wright stands in the sidelines. Although curious, he appears more inclined to watch the scene than help. They're all as likely to believe me as Rose does. To everyone, whatever's in this house is just a hoax. A cautionary tale for children, but at least three of them are going to see a ghost now. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? Eat a butt. She offers me a drink, but I push it away. I need to get out of here before I cause an even bigger commotion. Clear my head, take a breath of fresh air. Anything to take my mind off things. So we got to... No one's gonna believe me anyway. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make a quick exit. Doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving for, for a behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler. Eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. You didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And look. She hesitates, completely trailing off before shifting her gaze down to her hands, a small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that goddamn letter again. Wait, I didn't give it to her. My hands stiffen when she gives it back but I take it nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can. I have this nagging feeling that one way or another it'll find its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. I mean, try! Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly, and we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. No. Oh. But I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something... I don't know, this... big. I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... Bitch, I'm fine. My mind stops. What? Wait. No, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. Bitch. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought... 
I need hey, this money, it's your motherfucker. Own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you. And let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly okay. could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. Oh, I'm gonna show- let's go back and show her the letter and make her- no, because she doesn't read the it anyway. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. No, bitch. She clasps her hands together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. No! I need money! I do understand, to some extent. Doesn't mean make me feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at the unlucky turn the situation has taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll okay. even let you take the lead tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A mm. little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob. And I don't even know what that means! Sorry, your boss called you a noob? Where the fuck are you working? Are you working at Reddit? Do you work at Reddit? <laughs> at the memory, we both burst into helpless giggles, earning us strange looks from the guests milling around the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? Still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's been better for, it's better for me to step out of this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? Okay. She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. With nothing left to, no, left with nothing to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderly, <laughs> gathered with some ways across from me, is occupied in a friendly banter about which one would cost more to buy. Little argument here, occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help. Speaking of, I should call Ash. Guys, okay, okay. So I uh, said so this before. So like, I kind like I vaguely like watched this game being played. No, not really. Uh, it was like the thing that I I fell asleep to for a little while, um, though not for long because like uh, I was watching uh, uh, Dodger and Jesse play it. Um, and they get very loud, and I was just like, this isn't good for sleepy buys. Um, and so I stopped watching it pretty soon, and also I was not paying that much attention. But I woke up for this. For this moment. And I didn't go to sleep for a while, because it was my favorite thing in the world. <gasps> I could go for a PB&J sandwich. Oh my god, it's been so long since I've had a PB&J sandwich. Oh, I love them. Okay. It's a few hours early from what I told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that I'll ever accept the latter, personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever works, a free ride is still a free ride. Come on, go on, go on. There's Rose's offer too, fuck you. But despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few pairs asking for a decent signal later, the call finally connects Ash! Shit! Putting the volume all the way up. Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. 
Sup, Bob Ash from Deluxe City. Baggers, watch out. Can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Sup, Bob Ash from Deluxe City. Baggers, watch out. Can't beat me. Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Sup, Bob Ash from Deluxe City. Baggers, watch out. Can't beat me. Up for trouble, trouble, better not, not lie. I'm a cool, cool dude. dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Stop up at the Deluxe City. Baggers will chat. Can't be me. Up for trouble, better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Okay, I have to make this stop. I have to make this stop. Can't be me. Okay. Shit. What? Shit, how loud is this thing even? A sharp ringing fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant quiet that had settled. Soon enough, heads begin to turn in search of the source, mine included. My eyes dart all it's still going. My eyes dart all around the small crowd before zeroing in on a lone figure crouched behind the same group of old people checking out the decor as moments ago. He's facing away from me, fumbling with something in his hands. But I don't need to see his face and know his back it is. I'd recognize that dumb parka anywhere. Without bothering to end the call, I march toward him. Stop on that. Okay. After what happened today, I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Of all the times to. Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Stop on that. Okay. Ashton Frey! Yo, it waboo. What happens next is something I'll surely regret later for not having recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get your full day's pay for that one, my boy? Yeah. He jumps, lets out an indignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping from his grip. Hello there, light. How you doing, baby? It bounces from one hand to the other in his poor attempt to catch it before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding kalak. I feel kinda sorry for the phone. And the floor. It's not every day you catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn, his stupid detective says, oh yeah, he's a detective, which is batshit insane. Because of who he is as a person. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. <laughs> An awkward pause passes between us. I have a blink, a cough. He makes a face. And then, in a too quick motion, he ducks and retrieves the abused gadget while a grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't meet my eyes when he straightens, but a flush has crept up his neck and cheeks. In another universe where we haven't known each other for five years and suffering through his teasing isn't a day-to-day -day occurrence, chances are I'd find it adorable. Endearing, even. Unfortunately, this is not that kind of word. Word world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his obnoxiously calm and collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cat. I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. Says asshole. God damn it. What? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way. Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Shut up. Talk to yourself. You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the canary. Suddenly, checking every nook and cranny of his phone for damage or scratches seems like a much more interesting activity than explaining himself. I thought that the... No, it was the cat that got the cream that's like... Yeah. Ash. I could be looking to buy a house. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He's cat chances a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious. Follow his gaze, but before I can figure out what caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. Ghost? I just finished working on something, so I dropped by. Maybe ghost. Okay. I don't see how this work has anything to do with why he's here. My confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm, like he's touched something particularly hot, and casually rubs the back of his neck. And I, uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Uh, free time and all. So here, here I am. 
Uh, oh my god. Figured you'd still be busy, and so I roamed around for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. Fucking... I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client. We have mandatory oh, sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said, never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? What? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Sometimes I forget how easy reading people is for Ash, given how often he looks as if some everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want to is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person on earth that will ever think about telling it to, if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he's helped me, even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts in the supernatural? He'll never believe those, even if he hears it from a friend. Except maybe, maybe if it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you an explanation why those things have no chance of ever being real. At worst, then you're gonna die via ghost, boy! He's insufferable! He'll poke fun at you in every single chance he'll get. Ashhole. What'd I ever do to him? What, he never does it to Becca or to Zack. I can already imagine how things will go down the moment I spill a word of what I saw. Nope, over my dead body. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter deep into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. It's changed to Ash and not just Ashhole now. It doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zack's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around five or six? What about- Hey, Isabella, wait up! <laughs> We're just like, fuck you, bitch! A rush of air greets me as soon as the main door opens. Not the usual autumn draft, but it's still a welcome change in the stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes thumping hard against the polished concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out once, twice. The mansion still looms in the background. Whispers calling me back, shadows beckoning. Help me. Fuck you, help me, wind! I don't look back. We spend the ride back to Luxburn City in a relatively quiet manner, with only the radio's disjointed hum in the background to fill the silence. Occasionally, Ask will re reach out to fiddle with it until the signal settles or, or it's on a respectable volume, but otherwise he doesn't say anything. Neither do I. However, if the furtive glances he's been sending my way are signs, I know there are things he's been itching to ask ever since we last left the mansion. I keep my eyes trained on the passing scenery outside in the small hope that my disinterest will dissuade him. Here. All of a sudden, he tosses something at me with a small, from a small compartment on his side. Hits me cleanly on the chin before I can make a move to catch it. A small package makes a soft landing on my lap instead. <laughs> Sorry. The glare I send him wipes a smirk about to form cleanly off his face. He clears his throat, focusing his eyes on the road again. I swear he did that on purpose. Ignoring him, I flip open I flip the half forgotten package on my lap. I won't say no to free food. But why are you food. giving away cereal bars? I want, oh, I want a cereal bar now. I just want food. Oh, I want food. God damn it. I always have one on my person. Oh, and my you person. look like you're about to pass out back there. Have you eaten lunch yet? I don't get a chance tonight because on cue my stomach rumbles loudly and an empty gnawing feeling in my belly becomes noticeable. No surprise there. I did skip breakfast and lunch so I could catch Becca while she was on break. I was hoping to get a small meal after, I guess with everything going on, I just forgot until Ash mentioned it. It's not like this whole feeling's new to me, though. If anything, it's just one of the things I've gotten used to ignoring over the years growing up. A thanks, then I tear open the package and start nibbling on the edge of the bar. Apart from an acknowledging nod, Ash doesn't say anything after the small exchange. For that, I'm thankful. After getting an earful from both Becca and Rose, it's nice to be able to sit down with someone who's not gonna nag at you. How'd the open house go? The usual. We got a bigger crowd than normal because of the property's fame, but 
really no different from the typical open house. On second thought, it actually looks like a fancy party more than an open house. I've never felt so underdressed in my life. Weren't you there? I wasn't really listening. I should have asked someone to kick you out. No, you won't. And what makes you so sure? One, ever since you got assigned to this property, you've been freaking out about it. Rebecca's words, not mine. She's been complaining to me about how you talked your ears off, by the way. Two, despite your initial qualms about the place, you still took the job, which brings us to three. It's been months since you last settled a deal, and you're short on money right now since you're back to your instant noodle diet. Stop being a detective! How do you even know about the last one? Rebecca. Anyhow, you're hell-bent on selling the mansion. Even if someone you know personally is in the tour group, you aren't going to just kick them out. I'm gonna get a quick sec. I ain't, wait, wait, I'll be three seconds. I'll be three seconds. I get, I need, look, they're talking about food. They're talking about food. That's my weakness. My weakness is people talking about food. And now I will sit here for the rest of this game eating biscuits. Every single person who went on your open house is still a prospective client to you. Even me. Prospective, not prospective. What are you talking about? Okay. He's not entirely wrong. Oh man, I walked into right into this one, didn't I? No, it's not giving me my delicious treats. Okay. I hate you. I really hate you right now. <laughs> His answer is a small laugh, the kind that screams, I'm right, and I told you so. I hate it when he does that. I'll have you know that there's already someone who's extremely interested in this property. So even if you express to any sort of interest in it, I don't think they'd be willing to let you have it. Too bad. Provided I didn't botch it with the rights. Why of all times I have to screw up like that? In front of the important, um, important customer, customer, no less, nailed it. I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. I need Bic to get. You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy. Mm. Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? Categorically, no. Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. Or is it the wardrobe this time? Why y'all so cavalier about this dead body sitch? I meant that as a joke, but... How close it is to the truth made my blood run cold and my own heart beat a heavy weight in my chest. All at once, the letter in my bag feels a whole lot heavier, burdened by my own guilt and apprehension. Yeah, well, things happened. Stuff the right couple might not be pleased about. No need to make a fuss about it. It's normal in the business. You made them angry? Not angry. Just stuff happened. Ooh, Jennifer Jelly is that pink show. Like? things. Did mm. they do anything? Your clients. The rights, was it? I can't answer that. Ooh. At least not without revealing everything that took place in the attic. Ooh. Hmm. Let's change the subject. I don't want to lie. You keep asking me about my work, yet you haven't said hey. a single word about yours. That's not fair. Both you and Zack have literally disappeared off the face of the earth. Not literally. <laughs> An over-exaggeration. But changing the subject to something else is still better than outright lying to him. Besides, it never works with him. I'm not sure if it's because I'm bad at it or because he's just really good at his job. He doesn't answer immediately, only momentarily shifting a glance over me and returning it back to the road when he, uh, when he has to make a sharp turn. Outside, the sun has already started its descent casting a vibrant orange glow on the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the venue for Zack's film. Checking the street signs outside, it appears Ash has taken the longer route. Odd, but he's probably trying to avoid the rush hour traffic. Didn't we just talk a week ago over chat? That's different. Linking your awful <clears throat> memes in the group chat box every morning isn't exactly a conversation. 
then I've never had a single conversation with any of my friends. How dare you? Excuse me, I don't hear you calling them awful while you're laughing at all of them. Shut up! And you aren't answering my question. That earns him a soft punch to his arm. I did laugh at them, but I'm not gonna give him the satisfaction of knowing that I find most of them funny. Oh my god, just enjoy things. It'll make only make his head bigger. Stupid ass. All right, all right. Lay off on the abuse. Remember that case I mentioned before? We've been trying to pin the bastard down, but it required the more work than we anticipated. Down. The guy's slippery like that. We got some good lead months ago. He recounts what he's been doing in the time that we haven't seen each other. His usual work, the occasional small investigation, and the big case he's been stuck working on. Stuff he couldn't mention in the brief time we chat, catch each other online. Although most of them uh, are, oh, most of it, uh, most of it are the trimmed down, but nope. Only things he can tell. He's always been careful about that. Awful means in the mornings are good conversation. They're, they're how you start conversations and middle conversations and end conversations. It's all memes. Even the way he spins his answers to my questions, just enough to satisfy my curiosity, but not enough to paint the whole picture. At one point, his voice takes on a strange tone when he mentions something about the big case, but I don't dwell on it much. That's normal, right? I mean, who wouldn't be frustrated if you couldn't bring someone to justice because they kept slipping out of your fingers? If I were in his shoes, I'd definitely lose my mind. His stories never cease to be entertaining, regardless. If things weren't the way they were back home, maybe I could have considered taking, the, taking on the same job as him. Well, no, not really. Mama would never allow that. The idea is still there along with countless others I've let go. Time passes quickly between us in this manner, and before I know it, we're already at the movie house. I wanna eat my biscuit. A small crowd has already formed in front of the theater when we arrive. The Lift Fest, short for Luxborn Independent Film and Theater Festival, attracts a bigger crowd annually, and this year's no different. I've only been a few, to a few indie film screenings with Zack, so I'm not an expert on the matter. But I know that for people hoping to make a fresh break in the industry, getting your film recognized by a local event like this is already a big deal. Especially for a newcomer like Zach. He hasn't even won an award, but just getting a confirmation letter that the festival committee wants to include his movie in this year's lineup already put a grin on his face for weeks. Speaking of the guy, he's impossible to miss. Six feet, he appears to loom over most of the moviegoers. With his large build and heavy voice, there's no surprise when people, that when people give him a wide berth as they pass by. It's often easy to mistake him for someone intimidating at first glance. I did, back when I didn't know any better. Ash did too, I heard, once early in their friendship. Oh, there's Zach. Hey! Hey, hey, you guys! Long time no see! He has the world's most pleasant face. What are you talking about? Zack's face lights up with a smile of his own. He moves towards us with careful steps, taking a significant effort to make himself smaller so as not to bump or accidentally hit anyone. Typical Zack. As he nears, Ash casually raises a hand in greeting and- Sup, Z-Man! My main man! What's crack a lackin', my homie? I hate him. Show Ash the letter. The awkwardness that descends within the immediate vicinity of our small group is palpable enough. Show, just show Ash the letter. Get, get that boy eaten by a ghost. <laughs> Somewhere to her left, a girl giggles, and only then do I become aware of my mouth hanging open. I'm almost amazed how Ash can say that out loud with a straight face. Almost. Considering his track record, I should be used to it by now. Zack seems to be. Don't stop trying to act black, Ashton. And you're the only one who calls me Z-Man. Rip him to shreds, Zack! Hey, Zack, rip him to shreds! There's fondness underneath his exasperated tone. <clears throat> if this were any other person, he'd likely be offended, but after years of friendship and familiarity have made those words harmless to the other's ears. What? All right. What's crack lacking? Oh my god. 
You're not a cartoon zebra! Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Or at least enough to, for both to take it in stride. <laughs> it's been a while, Zach. I hope you didn't get into trouble again. Not much to get into trouble lately without you, I'm afraid. I'll let you know if something comes up, though. Nah, I ended up with chicken down stuck on me last time I agreed. I'd really love at least this year to pass without some sort of accident happening again. Hey, I take offense to that. It wasn't that bad. You really have no idea. A beat passes, and then Zach laughs. Hey, oh, I'm no. kidding! You know you can always count on me. Hello there, Neil. How you doing, darling? How's the day going? It's a story only the two of them are privy to. Every now and again, Ash will enlist Zach's help on something. Beckon and I never really found out what the real deal is with those adventures, as Ash calls it, but both aren't willing to tell due to some unspoken agreement. <laughs> she insists that if it's Ash, it's likely not something illegal or life-threatening. I tend to believe her on that. Sometimes. Oh well, ugh, boys will be boys. Ugh, worst phrase in the world. Ugh, no, boys will be held accountable. Go away. I give Zach a small wave from behind Ash when his attention eventually turns to me. Ah, oh, I'm glad you're doing good. Ah, oh, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that you got to speak, spend time with your boyfriend, though. That's nice. The hell uh... Huh? Rebecca's not with you. Is she still sick? A bit. But she's up and went to oh work no, this morning. Oh no, I don't know when she's done speaking. Oh no, I'm not got my headphones in, so I don't know when she's done speaking. Oh no. Nailed you it. know she doesn't listen to anyone that's not Ash. But no, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Although this game has already given me some spooks. Fuck that. Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. You're literally the only person she'll listen to when she's feeling stubborn. <laughs> Oh, it's true. They've known each other far longer than any of us in the group. Childhood friends but and all. But don't worry, Zach. She's probably on her way here now. She promised she wouldn't miss your movie. Isabella! Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Speak of the devil. That warning, a hand grabs me by the shoulder and turns me around. Becca, you're just in time. I have to lean back a little with the way her face is almost invading my personal space, but she places her hand on either side of my head to keep me still. Oh yeah, we've got, all the, we've got all the links to all the spooks so far. No. But there is I turned I turned I did some I did some like zippity bop boop bop boop zap. She stares at me intently, concern filling her eyes. Ugh, you're squishing my face. How are you? Are you alright? why wouldn't I be? Rose called me earlier. Those four words tell me all I need to know. No. <laughs> Since I don't have my family living close by, and the only other relative I have here works on the far side of the country, I gave my company Beck—I gave my company Becca's contact number in case of emergency. Should have known Rose would call her. I push Becca's hands away from my face. Although she lets go, her eyebrows remain drawn together. Oh no, no, everything's good. Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about. How's your head? <laughs> Beside me, Ash snickers. I bite the urge. I bite back the urge to elbow him in place of trying to avoid Becca's hand as she tries to reach out for the said area. No complaints, bitch. Okay. I do my best to dodge her, all at once moving to hide behind Zach. Sorry for using you as a human shield, Zach. Oh, it's nothing. I just slipped off a few steps on my way down. I blacked out for a few seconds and had a minor bump, but it's just that. You blacked out? Uh, it's not <laughs> something to brush off. Come on, at least let me check it. It's extremely minor. You wouldn't even know it's there. Isabella, this isn't a laughing matter. <sighs> she did look pale when I saw her. Wow, thanks a lot, Ashton. Thank you, Ash. Traitor. I'll get you back for this. Just you wait. What? I'm just saying it as it is. If you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. I'm sorry. Saw her? Yeah, they arrived together. Bella looked fine to me then. I don't know. Something crosses Becca's face, but it's gone and before I can figure out what it is. Oh, that's... that's good. At least she didn't have to travel alone, right? Oh. At least. Good. Girl, if you like Ash, say something. Go away. Don't be that guy. Ugh. See? I'm okay. 
I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Or if you like Bella. <gasps> Say something though, bitch. Don't beat this guy. And, and I don't want to miss sex film. We can always watch it some other time. <sighs> Sorry, Zachary. No, it's good. But you guys should really keep it down. Mm. We're starting to attract some attention. It's the premiere. The premiere's different. Right, Zach? I showed him a pleading look. Zach's a sensible guy. He'll understand. Please understand. Not really. But Rebecca has a point. In the end, I think it's your call. Oh, for heaven's sake. Please, Becca. I really don't want to miss it. You're not missing it. Oh, we're just moving it on a different day so we can have a... Look, you guys. Ash's loud sigh unexpectedly cuts through the conversation. He's pinching the bridge of his nose as he speaks. It's something he usually does when he's getting impatient. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. Besides, she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me. If she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? Oh, Becca, please. I like you. Please don't be that girl. Becca, please. Uh... Friendship is more important than your bullshit. Ugh. I'm not. But if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Tell you what. If I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. Is that good enough for you? I already know the answer before Becca voices it out. When at last she realizes a deep breath, releases a deep breath and nods, albeit with great reluctance, I immediately tackle her into a hug. Thanks, Becca. Okay, I've been with this group for three seconds, and I'm just like, okay, so there's a weird, like, romantic tension here. How the fuck would this group be together after so long dealing with this? Do you want to know a thing? I've been in this group. I've been in this group with this tension. And you know what? It fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. Talk it out like adults or shut up and go away. I don't care. <laughs> Either one. It's always been you with him, isn't it? Oh my God. This is my least favorite thing in the world. Fuck this? Did you Ugh. say something? Me? Uh, nothing. Don't mind me. Oh my god, you're adults. You're adults. You're not in high school. You're adults. Fuck off. If Ugh. you say so. Done. Okay, guys, showtime's close, so I think I'm gonna get us some snacks. My treat. And then let's head inside. Okay, Isabella is the most, like, oblivious bitch in the world. Like, I can't believe that anyone is this oblivious in the world. Zach is just like, no, I'm not dealing with their fucking high school bullshit anymore. Uh, Anyone here has a smaller bill? I think I do. Hold on. I pull myself off from Brecca and get to get my wallet from my bag and- What's this? I'm just- Look, his May is done. High school bullshit. Can't fuck with it. I, like, I hated it in high school. If you're doing this shit as an adult, I don't know how long we can be friends because no, I don't care. <laughs> Talk it out or go away. <laughs> Oh, now they're all gonna die. Now they're all gonna die. It's already in Ash's hands before I can even react. Okay. Ash and Becca, have a little look. Zach, just like, wait a second. Zach, like, once they've run it, they make up the five. Zach, you just, come on, Zach. Zach? Oh no, you can fuck with my name however you want. It's hilarious, I love it. Zach can, uh, hey Zach. You don't, you're great. You do not get to touch this nightmare letter. Not for you, only for these two. Then they can see a ghost and die together. Fine. Okay, behind him, Becca and Zach are both giving the piece of paper an intrigued look. But is, did Zach like look away for a hot second so that Rebecca saw it first? That'd be nice, huh? Could that, could that be the case? No, give it back. It's just a paper. I don't care, give it. Looks ancient too. Why do you keep this around? I try and reach for it, but he holds the paper way above his head. <laughs> you mad, right, fat bastard. Uh, I've never been particularly sensitive about my own height, but right now I really wish I had that advantage over him. Don't open it! What's the big deal? It's not like it's a love letter. I don't see any reason to- Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? 
Even if it is, it's not for you. Okay. Now I'm curious. I'm telling you, it's nothing like that. It's... The rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. And Zack looks away so that only these two see it. Ah, that, hey, Zack, did you happen to see it like a little bit afterwards? Oh, the achievement says too early for Halloween. What? What's it? What? It's just, it doesn't say what I did for the achievement. It just says it's too early for Halloween. All oh, right, I guess that's gonna be something that they say. Okay. I can't breathe. Hey, Zach, can you just like not look at it? I can't breathe. My heart feels stuck in my throat, pounding, threatening to burst out. Vaguely, I note how my hands are trembling at my sides. Clasping them together doesn't do any good. They're still shaking, but I hang on to them regardless. The awful sick weight that has taken its core in my stomach back in, back in the open house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone please. Today is turning out to be a horrible net more. Send this to five people or else. Okay, I will say that bit did get wrote in ketchup. <laughs> it was lighter and whatever. <laughs> I'm just like, what if, look, I was fine with it until maybe, maybe Zach will get hurt. I love Zach and we must protect him. This is, this is, look, that's what this playthrough is. Protect Zach. This playthrough is protect Zach. I don't really give a shit about the rest of them. No, the rest of them are fine. But like, Zach, you protect him. Well, that's interesting. Um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? Yeah. Ash waves the paper in front of me, giving me a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see. I don't want to see. The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. Maybe I should have just thrown it away when I had the chance. That way... That way... It's not a prank. It makes all of them stop. Even I'm surprised with how steady my voice is. What did you say? Ooh, their eyes all flicked up to me, huh? Ooh, okay. This isn't a prank! I a saw prank. something! It isn't a prank! Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. I mean... The one who looked at it last might not be. You've got to be kidding me. See? This is why I didn't want to tell you guys. Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? It's not a joke. Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have. Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella, even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit is true. Oh, uh, now you're gonna get killed by a ghost! But it's real! Oh, what do you Isabella. think I saw? Isabella, maybe you're a ghost. Hey, look at your weird ghost face. Okay. Hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. Get a request. Uh -huh. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. Nothing? You went a bit southern for a when hot When Rose sec. called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Don't bother. Oh god, her fucking demon face. Oh. That another word, I snatched the letter out of Ash's hand and stuffed it in my bag with more force than necessary. I'm tired. I got cursed. <laughs> I got cursed. I saw a ghost. I probably lost a sale. Got kicked from my open house and supposed to be hoping my old friends will believe me and they all think I'm crazy. I started this with like a curse. Save, return for when before you go to the attic and don't hit Z. Ooh, okay. Yeah, sure, let's do that. Let's fuck that up. Yeah, load. I mean, we can do this one, because this one was the one, yeah, load. This was the one that, okay, be brave and look up. And then we're like, bad thing, 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 
Okay, yeah, let's see what happens when we don't press Z. Do we just die? Do we just fucking straight up conk it? Okay. I'm not gonna like it. I'm not gonna like it. Oh, I'm not gonna like it. Why am I doing this, actually? No, why do I do what people tell me? Oh, why did I do it when people tell me? It's bad! It's gone. Oh, I don't like that. That is, um, the thing that left a note. What? Where is it? Oh, it's even puppy! job. <laughs> and I did it. I have automatic regret. <laughs> oh. Don't make me do it. Oh, okay. Let's look. Well, that was great. I wish I was dead. Okay. Load that one. That was terrible. Look <laughs> at my goddamn boob. <laughs> like, I fell on, like, my elbow, but my hand just, like, jammed its way into my tit. <laughs> the moment highlighted god damn it i'll get it oh fucking ow. okay <laughs> to solve it all off there's a dull ache in my boob begging for a little attention that i cannot afford to give right now honestly there's so much only so much a person can take within a single day i just want to go home curl up in my bed and never think about today before i can take a single step away from the group guys Hey guys, Zach. I love Zach more than anything. Zach rarely ever raises his voice, even when there's a point. Even when there's a point he wants to drive home, and hearing him take on that tone completely throws me off. Even Ash and Becca, whatever harsh words yet yeah, yet to come out from the argument, immediately die in our tongues. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? We haven't seen each other for months. I I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever get to talk to Bella over chat. Please. He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool and distant, has also been really looking forward to this. He even took the time to call this morning for a reminder. He never does that. Becca too. I'm pretty sure that's another reason why she got out of bed today. <laughs> I didn't like it. Oh god. Yeah, despite Zach's attempts to lighten things up for Ash's and Rebecca and Becca's acquiescing gestures, the tightness in my chest remains. I feel ya, girl. I, sh I should have just kept it to myself or at least went with the idea that it's a prank. If I did, things might not have turned out the way they had. No sour mood, no bad vibes, harsh vibes, bro. So careless. Maybe leaving is the better decision for all of us. No, I'm staying. I mean, let's save it. Don't get me wrong. I'm definitely gonna stay for the movie. Uh. Uh. Okay. Rebecca would rather we go home. Oh well. Well then, eat a dick, Rebecca. We're gonna stay with her the film. Any other day, I'd excuse myself and go straight home. But this is something special to Zach. Something he worked so hard to bring to life. I should know better. 
<laughs> I apologize for inadvertently hurting your boob through my, my suggestion. <laughs> I, I like that. That's just like, oh, well, today I uh, caused someone millions of miles away from me to hurt their boob. <laughs> it's great. It's very good. Oh, God. I might be having a bad day, but being with the few people I care about far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. And what if the thing in the attic follows me home? <laughs> oh, okay. I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see it whenever I close my eyes. You can't distract yourself from that PTSD, baby. Hey, distract yourself from that PTSD, baby. I feel ya. <laughs> And maybe if I stay and let their heads cool down first before telling them what happened, they'll listen to me. There's nothing you can solve with a- uh, There's nothing you can't solve with a calm head. I was like, there's nothing you can solve with a calm head. You have to be irrational and crazy to get things done. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. A smile is back on my face when I look back at if them. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Meme! Why'd you say the most my man way? Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. Shut up, Ash. <laughs> this time I really do send an elbow straight to his stomach. <laughs> okay, don't hit. Don't do a hit, girl. Stupid Ash! Being vertically challenged has its perks, too. Don't do a hit! What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby! I'm not one. Aw, oh, don't Me -me. cry. Oh, he's gone back to Ash Hole. That's very fun. I like that a lot. Stop it! Okay, scaredy cat then. That too! If you repeat that, I swear I'll- <sighs> Let's just go. Becca's is also done. Without another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. Ash and I exchange looks at that. The same question likely swimming inside our minds. Something happened at school after I left. Is she having a bad day too? Okay, you be less oblivious. Ash be less of a dinkus. Rebecca, stop just being a cunt. Zach, just be it. Just you be you, Zach. You be you. I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. I read poisoned. I read, it's like, I'll go get us the food, I poisoned. I mean, po promise. <laughs> I didn't po poison your food. <laughs> but you'll miss it. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? And <laughs> it ain't like I haven't seen it. I made it, remember? I feel that. I don't want to see things I made on a big screen. I'll be in there soon. That's where all the flaws are very prominent. One friendly tap on my shoulder and then he's gone. Oh, I'm gonna do that soon. Oh no, when's the launch? Oh no, when is it? Wait. Okay. Okay, it's it's a while. Okay, it's in like three weeks. It's in three weeks, that's fine. Okay. A few moviegoers are still milling about. Some are still waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise most of the crowd are already inside. Oh, does anyone want a poster with my face on it? <laughs> You get posters with my face on it now, like actual posters with my face. That's dope. Oh god. There's nothing much for us to do here now. Not a word of protest comes from me when Ash gestures for the two of us to head inside. And then? Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. No, are we talking about this in the film? Don't talk about it in the film! Watch the film! Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened in the mansion. No! This is Zack's day! Bitch, you saw a ghost play! Watch his film! To be fair, Zack was the one who brought it up again. I don't care! Be like, shh, Zack, after your film. His own movie's premiere. Now, the film's just serving as background noise. Oh my god. Well, we're speaking in hushed tones, careful not to disturb anyone inside the small hall. I guarantee you that you are disturbing people in the small hall. I guarantee it. Except for Ash. Let's hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'll get kicked out for surezies. Though, with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out way before any argument happens. Only Becca still remains engrossed in the movie, completely ignoring us. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only when referred to. I didn't know any better. I think we did something that offended her. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. 
He's one of the smartest people I know, but jeez, he's got to learn to listen. Plus, he didn't say doesn't, or did he say he doesn't believe in these things? Why is he in this conversation again? I heard what you said, but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. There are no ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Yeah, but I was thinking. Maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? See, like, Zack's doing the right thing in believing in ghosts. But, because, like, you know, that means that, you know, you, you stand a better chance. Like, people who don't believe in ghosts, they die. But... <laughs> him he is a black man and therefore will die probably first huh he's probably gonna die first oh i don't want zach to die oh he's the only one that's not pissed me off yet <laughs> zach can you just did you just like not read the note real good maybe you just maybe you just like kind of like glance past it because you're like no that's some haunted shit i'm not looking at it if that please zach come on zach Oh, the house did change. Oh, the house did change hands over the years from one distant relative of the Irmigards to another. None of them bothered to live in it, though, and it remained that way up until its current owners decided to sell it. Why didn't I think of I that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zach. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive <laughs> to the place. <laughs> a scare compilation. Oh, God. There's going to be a lot of material. That's not a bad idea. I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering his suggestion, are you? Do you have a better idea? I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. You do that? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. Both are good. There are very few times in my life where I wish my... There are very few times in my life where I wish my glowers can kill. I wish it all the time. This is one of those. Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. Zach, you're a sweetheart. No, wait, that's not what I meant. Ethnographer. I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist, too, of course, if you- Ashton, if you don't stop- Rebecca knows the guy Ashton I'm talking about, too. She can vouch for him. I like that- I very much enjoy that his name turns from Ash to Ashhole when we're, when we're pissed off at him. That's good for me. Becca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her name. Huh? What? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. And can you guys keep it down? Yeah. Keep it the shit down. It's Zach's fa- Stop talking! Talk after! Sorry, the scaredy cat here mentioned curses. Not that I'm saying this is one, but talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out, teach you a couple things, and probably put your fears to rest since this looks to be bothering you a lot. Ash might be right too. However, what Zach suggested is something I'm more familiar with. Granted, they don't believe me. They're only trying to give me suggestions to put my mind at ease, but it's better than being ignored or laughed at. I can take comfort in knowing that they're willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't know. I... Ooh, meet with the priest or meet with the professor. Ooh, do you want to meet with the priest or meet with the professor? Do we want to meet with the priest or meet with the professor? Ismay says thanks meet with the professor, but Meet with the priest I wanna do whatever Zach look. Professor, but what about Zach's thing? I just want look. But Zach suggested the priest and I love him. I love him. So like my worry is that like if we're gonna go you know, like, if we're gonna go, like, I feel like the person who suggested the thing is gonna go with us, you know? Um, which means that, like, if we were, like, the priest, we're like, oh, let's go, Zach. Let's go visit a priest. Whereas if we say professor, then we're gonna have to go with both Ash and Becca, which is currently my nightmare because they both kind of suck when in proximity to one another. They both just kind of Like a absorbent butthole, so I hate it. Priest! 
I'll think about it. But maybe we could go with Zack's idea? Hey, Zack's happy. I'm not so sure about that. Well, it wouldn't hurt to try, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least we did something than just stand around. Look how happy he is. I'll let you know when he's available, Bella. I love him. Thanks, Zack. Thanks, I knew Zach. I could count on you. Please, please, please. I can always count on Zack. I love Zack. Hi, Zack. Guys, I, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it. You're not even paying attention yourselves. That is actually the first good point you've had in a while, Becca. This face, though? Yo, girl, are you haunted? Yo, girl, you haunted? You haunted a little bit? You a little bit haunted? You might be a little bit haunted. A big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. Yeah, but we should watch your film. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You mm. worked hard on this. She does not sound like she likes it. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. Thank you. I throw her an apologetic look. Even if Ash is the only one she should be reprimanding, but her attention is already back on the screen. No, you should be reprimanding all of them. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting this way, there's a big chance something's nagging at her. She looks... <laughs> she hurt, looks like she hurt both boobs. Now, maybe she is a sympathetic character. We really need to talk. We all fall into a comfortable silence after, the kind you can only share with people you're most at ease with. For the first time today, the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Wow. Night has fallen by the time we exit the movie house. What's this say? Bloop. Blap. Blorp. Let's Burn Independent Film Theater Festival celebrated its ninth year, discovering the new creative talents in the film industry. Included in the showcase this year was Zachary Steele's Blue J Blue Jean Blue Blue Jean Jean C. No, no, wait, Blue Jean C. Wait, no, Frey Blue Blue France Blue France. Dark Times of the Black British. Isabella Santos, Ashton Frey, and Rebecca Gales were also seen amongst the proud for its premiere. Um, we were uh, talking about ghosts through a film all about black history. <laughs> I mean, this is cool and all, you know, but what about this ghost, right? Why are we all wankers? Just watch a film. Watch the film. Watch the film. Just if it's any film, watch it. Especially if your friend made it. Oh my god, you guys, I cannot. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling and bustling full of people. Those about to head home, those set to meet someone, even those simply wandering about. Walking in the sea of unfamiliar souls, it strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city as nondescript as Luxburn. I was afraid, too, at one point, back when I was new and had just set foot in this place. Now, with familiar faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. Zack and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Becca and I crossed to the other side of the street. The former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of before the day ends, and Ash... Ah, who knows? He never tells. Blah, who cares? Blah. <laughs> Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zach a lot, much to the latter's frustration. But he's a busy guy too, in spite of the laid-back air he gives off. Thanks for today, everyone! No problem, Zach. Louder than I expected. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Help me. Huh? Help me, Wind. I don't like the help me wind! Help me. A sensation. Cold, sickening, drowning, my chest tightening, breathing coming labored. I can taste blood in my mouth. The edges of my vision blur. It's this bitch in the background! It's this bitch in the background. Okay. If I see this god this it's goddamn bed. You better not see a goddamn motherfucker again. In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reaches out to me. The help me wind. It's the help me wind. Dope, it's the help me wind. Pleading even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hands, my, my hands, my hands, my hands over my ears. No thank you, 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 no thank you. 
whispering and whispering and whispering, calling out. I don't like the help me win. No, not me. Help me. Somebody, help me. Isabella, Earth to Isabella. At her voice, the whole world suddenly snaps into place. The murmur is gone. When I open my eyes, Becca raises an eyebrow at me in question. Weren't you listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... yeah. Just... okay. Sorry. I spaced out. You always do that. Why are you nice to me when Ash isn't around? God, you suck. Becca sucks, huh? Okay. I follow her without complaint, but not before sneaking a glance to the far end of the street. Where the voice came from, where another set of eyes might be staring at me. Nothing. You fucking jump scare me again. There are only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Becca parked. If I'm expecting to see something or someone there, I try not to let it show. Try not to think of the tiny pinpricks of fear crawling at the pit of my stomach. So you got some other time? Y yeah see ya! Another glance, and with a final wave, we go off on our own ways. I don't know what I saw, I don't know what I heard, and I don't want to know. If this is what would help me, help me sleep tonight, what would give what would give back that normalcy in my life, then so be it. Ah, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. The darkness closes around me. Oh. Grasping. No, please don't be grasping. Pulling. Engulfing me. The ground caves in. Without warning, I'm falling. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Oh, look at these little pictures over here. Look at these pictures. Oh, no, I don't like this friend. Don't like this little friend here. Don't like this little friend here. Hmm. Hmm. No, I want to zoom in on him. I actually want to zoom in on him. I actually very much want to zoom in on him. I don't like him. Oh. Oh, I don't like him. Oh. Oh, actually, turns out I do not like him. Turns out I do not like this little nightmare. I don't like this little nightmare face. I don't like his little nightmare face. I'm not a fan of this little nightmare face. Look at all these nice faces, nice faces. Now, aw, look at, look at Zach's little face. Ah, cuties, cuties, cuties. Nightmare face. Look at this little nightmare face, boy. No. Who he? Look, turn ahead, Timmy. Right? No, bad. He's bad face. I'm gonna have to spend forever doing this, sorry. Oops, oops, oops. I goofed. I oopsed. I oopsed. Is this, nope, nope, nope. I oops. I oopsed. I oopsed. I oopsed. But I needed to highlight how much I did not like the face. Wait, yeah, yeah, wait, uh, uh, boop. okay. I needed to highlight how much I hated it. My eyes snap open. For an instant, it doesn't immediately register where I am. Both my back and shoulders ache after falling, after I've fallen asleep all hunched up the night before. Drenched in sweat, the nest of pillows I often keep around me feels more suffocating than comforting. Comfort I let my eyes adjust to the bright morning light streaming through my window and allow my breathing to slow down before entangling myself from the pile. I haven't had a single dream since coming to Luxburn, or at least none I can recall having. It's a shame because they used to be so vivid. Not like crazy vivid, but more the pleasant kind I can tell my siblings about. Maybe it's just the stress of living alone. The knowledge that I'll always wake up in an empty apartment with no one to tell stories to. Oh. Mm, what time is it? Habit forces me to look over at the clock, even with the soreness waving heavily on my shoulders and the compulsion to never leave my bed for the day. In a heartbeat, I'm up. Also, I very much enjoy this little cat pillow, this little cat, cat bat, little cat bat pillow. I like this cat bat pillow. I also like this little sheepy, but I like the cat bat. I like the cat bat a lot. It's a very good cat bat. Also, what monster puts a poster on top of a poster when there's plenty of room? I mean, like, move this one over there, move this one over here. This one goes a bit further over here. This one goes over here or down there. 
You've got enough room. You monster. Oh, man. Of all the times to oversleep. Towel? Towel? Where's my towel? Girl, it's 5 a.m. How's that oversleep? Okay. Admittedly, it's a weekend as an unspoken rule that entitles me to extra hours of sleep. But if Rose didn't kill me yesterday, she sure as hell will now. And right after what happened, oh lord, one box of donuts as peace offering won't be enough the second time around. Grabbing my towel, I'm already a few short steps away from the bathroom when a muffled ringing breaks out from my bag. There's a moment of indecision at first, my mind conflicted about whether I should just ignore her or answer it. What if it's Rose? Or worse, our boss. Ah, sheesh, in the end, the rational part of my brain wins out. The letter from yesterday peeks out when I pull the device out. Just the sight of it is enough to put me in a foul mood and takes away, and takes every force of will for me to just ignore it in favor of answering the call. Then color ID reads Mama. Huh? It's around four. Wait, PM? Oh, right, okay. What? Where are you then? Wait, where are you then? It's around 4.45 p.m. in the Philippines right now. That's an unusual time for them to call. What the fuck time would it be? What? Where, how, where are you guys then? Where is like 12 hours away from the Philippines? Usually it's around noontime here and I'm the one calling, not the other way around. Better for them to use that money on something else than an international call. It's a lot of noodle cups. It's a lot of noodles. It's gonna say a lot of nudes, but that's a different prob. Regardless, in the most cheerful tone I can gather. Hello? Hello, Grace? How are you? Mama, oh. I'm doing okay. How are you guys over there? We're good, we're good. EJ won a storytelling contest oh. at school the other week. Brought home a medal. I oh, sorry. I fell, I fell on the thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Mama. Oh, Mama, Mama would burn me. There's a tell to, there's a tired lilt in her voice as she speaks, as if it's been it's been there since Papa had to leave his job. I wish there was something I could do for her. But from miles away like this, the least I'm able to do is not make her worry. If only my older brother would actually lend her a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. They live in the apparently they live in the but like, but the wait the, is the what? And also have them learn English. Odds are Kuya Jordan is all wait Kuya. Oh, no, odds are Kuya Jordan's already out drinking right now. Twelve hours from the Philippines is my time zone. Oh, interesting. Half of them are English. That's just not acknowledged. Half of them are English. Okay. Again. I can't count on my older sister either, knowing that she has a family of her own and, well, eight and, wait. Eight. Anne's financial situation isn't exactly great right now. I ran herself knee deep in debt. Great, that's great. Tell him congratulations from me. And let him know I'm gonna send him a little something extra that- How about Nico? Christmas, sorry. Karen? Michael? I hope they're okay. I'm an idiot. I'm bad. I keep resting my hand and I can't. They're doing well. They wanted to talk to you, but they're all busy with school. Oh no, that's fine. I don't want to bother them. Just tell them to keep doing their best for me. I'll just call back when I know they're not busy. And Papa? How's Papa doing? It's a subject I'm a bit hesitant to broach. From the way Mama's voice hitches, she doesn't want to bring it up either. Papa. Grace, Papa's... He's having a little difficulty right now. Weak appetite, he's having trouble swallowing, and lost a few pounds. I saw a ghost. Oh, <laughs> no, that's not, you know, that's probably nothing, but like, I saw a ghost. But the doctor said we should keep oh, encouraging what? him. It just means his body's accepting his new treatment well. The money you sent last time helped a lot to pay for it, by the way. Oh, I see. Th that's good. I won't deny that life has gotten tougher for our family. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. But ever since he was diagnosed with a sickness five years ago, he'd been unable to provide for us. Now the burden of feeding eight mouths, eight mouths, and settling Papa's bills all rest on my shoulders. Though Mama makes a little, accepting sewing and laundry jobs in our neighborhood, it's scarcely enough to cover the cost of day-to-day -day living, let alone the bloating hospital bills. 
We can't even expect help from our own government because the health insurance there barely covers anything. Hi guys, my name is Isme. You should have universal health care. <laughs> you know what would be good? If we paid a little extra taxes so people wouldn't die on the daily, you know? Gave more of our, our tax money to like, you know, to hospitals and shit so that people don't die on the daily, huh? This has been Isme. Fuck you, the world. I'm sure he'll get better soon. Is he well enough to talk? Do you think I'll be able to speak to him, Ma? Silence. I start to think that the call got out, got cut until- Listen, Grace. Maybe it's better if we transfer Papa to a different hospital. Somewhere cheaper? What? Why? Did something happen? Is it the deposit issue again? Give me the hospital's number. I'll talk to them. Ooh. No, it's nothing bad. The service here is good. Too good. Even the doctors. But I'm worried you're working yourself to the ground because of it. Mama, we've been through this before. I want the best for Papa. Oh, girl. And don't worry about the bills or the medicine, or me for that matter. I can handle myself. Everything's going well here. In fact, in fact, we're about to close a large sale. Hopefully. No, nah, then I'll find another way. She doesn't need to know that. Sorry, Mama. You taught me not to lie, yet look at what I'm doing. I'll have money to send over soon to cover the rest of Papa's treatment. And there's more than enough for Karen, Nico, Michael, and EJ's school tuition, too. Oh, Thank you so much, dear. I appreciate it. We all do. I just wish you'd come home to us soon. Oh. I'm gonna butcher your language and I'm very sorry. Oopsie doopsie. When are you coming home? EJ, the youngest, used to be the only person asking me that. How do you respond to a question you don't have a definite answer to? Five years later and I still can't give him the straight one. I smile, though Mama can't see it. I fight to keep my lips from quivering, my voice from shaking. She's gotten off on her plate as it is. No need to weigh her down with unnecessary concerns. Promise me you'll be there to welcome me when I do, okay? Of course. I'm sorry, Grace. I need to take this for a while. There's a small commotion on the other end. The sounds of gates opening, the voice of, the ch of a child, EJ, talking excitedly about his day at school, the tapping of feet on the floorboards as he runs. It's been years since I went home, but I can still picture the whole scene in my mind. How tall is he now? Are the neighborhood kids bullying him now that I'm not around? Did Mama rearrange the furniture in the living room again? What are they having for dinner today? I miss them. I miss them so much. It's okay, Ma. I need to go too. I've got work today. I'll call again soon, alright? On a Saturday? Oh, never mind. Take care of yourself, dear. I love you. Bye. I hope you don't get et by a ghost. It ends with a soft click. Half-truths and empty promises hanging in the air. Oh. Wait. <clears throat> Before we get to this emotional bit. Let's, uh... Oh. What? Oh, it's a new day. <laughs> oh, look at her family. Oh, no, look at them. Isabella received an unexpected call from her family back in the Philippines. An emotional moment, her mother informed, of her, informed her of her father's deteriorating condition despite treatments. Never, nonetheless, the young woman assured her and that they continued to work hard to be able to support all of them. Oh, girl. Hope you don't get et by a ghost. Closing my eyes for a moment, I take a deep breath and shake away the thoughts beginning to swim inside my head. Please don't show me a ghost right now. It's pointless to mull over these things right now. Please don't show me a ghost. Okay, okay Isabella. Okay. Time to now. get that mansion sold. Unfortunately, before I can take a single step away from my phone, it rings again. No doubt Mama forgot to say something. Mama? Did you forget anything? Excuse you. I'm <laughs> too young to be your mom. Are you still sleeping? Sorry. Did you get an English person to say mom? I am too young to be your mom. 
It's Mom. I say Mom, but whatever. Hold on, never mind that. Get yourself in the office, hurry! Office? What about the open house? Oh no. Is it Sir John? Did he hear about yesterday? Am I in trouble? Oh god, oh god, oh god! I'm gonna get yelled at, aren't I? What do I do? Um, I'll buy you an extra box of donuts if- No, 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 it's nothing like that. Will you calm down? Get yourself here, all right? I'll tell you everything then. There's a telltale din of several feet shuffling against wooden flooring and an indistinct yelling in the background before Rose cuts the connection. That is not comforting. That's enough reason for me to hastily discard my phone and finish my shower in record time. I make it to our office within 20 minutes of leaving my apartment, completely disheveled and out of breath. A feat, if I take into account my usual travel time. I thought like you said tra time travel. I was like, oh, this has a new aspect and it's time travel. Routine clamor common to the Briar Realty's corporation, Briar Realty Corporation's Luxburn office greets me as soon as my foot crosses the threshold. Papers rustling, telephones ringing at sporadic intervals, agents talking at varying volumes, staff moving about, and... Where the hell is seen? Where are my employees? Oh, hello, Sir John. What the actual fuck, guys? Of all the times to disappear without notice. Oh, hi, Sir John. My boss's words turn muffled as someone else closes the door to his office, likely the work of our HR manager. Throughout the past weeks, he's been in a bad mood over a few employees who have feared to report to work. I hear they're still trying to get a hold of them, but to no avail? The result is, half their workload has been shifted to the available staff as to not lose clients. What? People are just going missing from our office and we're like, what? That's fine. Not that I mind the extra work. If anything, it means I'll have more time to send my family back home. Uh, well, I have more to spend my send my family back home. <laughs> Although the rumors of a branch closure circulating because of this is indeed a bit worrisome. My bag barely touches the top of my table when Rose pulls me aside. Here, I need you to help me with these papers. If you could also get these signed and photocopied before lunch today, that would be great. One after another, she thrusts a bunch of paperwork in my hands without explanation. A page flutters away from the top of the pile, and I lean down to pick it up, my eyes scanning the top of the page as I straighten. A purchase and sale agreement. Rose simply gestures her thumb in the direction of her visitor lounge when I tilt my head in question. They are still seated on the sofa and looking completely out of place in the humbly decorated room is the same couple from the day before. The rights. Something bubbles up in my throat. Their presence in the office can only mean one thing. They're buying it? We got a deal? Buying it? They're buying it? She swats at my hand, tugging her sleeve, although her eyes are alight with something akin to joy. She wants the sale to happen as much as I do, and now that it's here. This deal needs to be closed yet. Documents need to be signed still, but the elation is there. Along with a foreboding feeling that I can't quite pinpoint. I had to do a little damage control, but they're already interested in acquiring the property. Even before they attended the open house. I mean, isn't it obvious? They already hired an interior designer. I've never seen a buyer as aggressive as Madame Wright. She didn't even try to negotiate a lower rate. Yes, bitch. One at a time, Rose. I can't process everything you're saying at once. What do you mean? They're paying 15% higher than the listing price. As long as we get the paperwork done as soon as possible. I think if we allow it, they'll be paying up front, too. Even with that urban legend? Rose nods. Oh, I was so sure we lost the sale after yesterday. Don't look so surprised. We still have to conduct some last few checks before we completely hand it over to them. Please. I'll happily do the paperwork duty, Rose. I'll even go to the land registry myself and make sure the property changes hands with every single legal blessing. Don't they have better things to do to, to spend money on? I'd haggle it down to the lowest possible price if I was in their place. Especially with the stories attached to it. The ghost! Not that my opinion matters. Pfft. We're just their agents who are gonna receive the hefty commission after all. Nothing more. Rose gives me a pat on the shoulder, signaling that she's heading back to them and an unspoken instruction for me to follow her after to follow after I'm done. It doesn't take me long to finish what work she left me. In fact, having her boss sign the agreement is the e is easiest since it has put them him in a better mood to the entire office's relief. Man Hannah calls me over the moment she notices my presence at the lounge door. Hello. 
She welcomes me with a bright smile, her movements more open than one, what one would typically expect from a passing client to have. Oh, Isabel! How are you feeling? You looked awfully dreadful yesterday. Isabella, I'm fine now, ma'am. I appreciate your concern. I really don't understand why they can't get my name right. It's a fairly common name. It shouldn't be too hard to remember. Regardless, I hand them their copy of the agreement. Wonderful. Your team works unbelievably fast. Uh, stop. Ma'am Hannah skims through each of them with a scrutinizing eye, checking every page for in any inconsistencies and errors. Despite the unassuming impression she gives off, she appears awfully she appears fully aware of what to look for in the process contracts like this undergoes. It's surprising, to be quite honest, and pegged her for someone who is well versed in these things, yet here she is. She shows some of it to her husband, and he responds with the same passive interest as if he's more than happy to leave everything to her. I can't tell if it's purely because she, he believes she's capable enough, doesn't care about what they're buying, or simply finds paperwork tedious. Apparently satisfied- oh god, I hate seeing his pervert face. Apparently satisfied with what she's seen, Mam Hannah claps her hands together before extending it for us to shake. Rose and I release the breath we've been holding, both of us more than happy to return the gesture. That settles it then? Uh, are you really sure about this property, ma'am? Shut up, Isabella! Hey, Isabella, be better at your job! If they have it, they say ain't gonna haunt you, right? They get, they get haunted. You fucking leave! Fucking leave that spooky bitch! We could easily find you a bigger one among our current <laughs> listings. Something with a modern touch? Shh. Get rid of the terrifying spooky house and never see it again. What's your problem, bitch? Wait, something not haunted, maybe? Rose shoots me a warning glance that clearly says, Shut up, you idiot! Of course, why wouldn't I be? The house is absolutely perfect, isn't it, darling? A hell of that would still be a nice addition. Yes, well, we'll get there eventually, love. I'm in a hell of a for my giant swanging dick. <laughs> I hate him. As I was saying, if your partner had the documents yesterday, we would have bought it right there immediately. Like... Like, Hannah was alright to start with, and now she's just like, hmm, I'm not gonna say anyone's name because I'm that person who's like, oh, how's your new girlfriend? Oh, how's your new girlfriend? Like, Eleanor. Is Eleanor? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. And he's just like a magical space pervert, and I can't deal with him. I hate him. Shame she didn't have it. Well, there's still a few necessary documents we need you to sign after, but we'll let you know once we have those finalized. We'll be handling the process for the rest, so don't worry about it, ma'am. Within a week, I hope. We still have a housewarming party to plan, after all. You know how much thought to be put into those how things. How do you do- We're having a housewarming, like, next week. We've lived here for, like, a month. You have a mansion. How are you doing this in, like, a week? Fuck off. There are servants for that, darling. There you go, that's how. Love, wouldn't it be better if we handled it ourselves? A personal touch of sorts. It is our housewarming party and our new home. No more than a week, ma'am. Barring unexpected delay, of course. You can leave it to us. Excellent. Well then, I'll leave you two to it. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, and before we forget... She discreetly folds something into both of our hands and winks. A finger raised to her lips, demanding our silence. I know both of you worked hard on getting us this beautiful mansion. Those are British. Those are British. Those are British notes. Those are English. Those are British notes. Those are British notes. Fuck you. Those are actually very specifically English notes. We have different ones in Scotland. That when we take them to England and we're like, I want to pay something with this legal tender that you can definitely accept. They look at us like we're crazy and we're like, I don't know if we can accept Scottish money. It's the same money, fuckheads. I don't like England. Nah, England's fine. No, I like the English. I don't like England. No, I like England. England's fine. Whatever. Colonizing bastards. Um... Did I mention we reward our people generously? But this is... Ma'am, I can't accept yes, this. Yes, you can! Don't you worry, darling. It's a small thing coming from us. Consider this your bonus for a job well done. Done! She smiles sweetly like this is simply the most normal thing to do in the world. Maybe the time zones are wrong in the game. Like, it's all about, cause like, some of them are American, some of them are British. They're just there. You got some Irish person that's just hanging around being Irish. Oh, 
Oh, before I forget, my lovely interior designer Irish. would appreciate it if you hand her a copy of the floor plan as soon as possible. She's dying to work on the house. Don't say dying to work on the house like that. You live in a haunted mansion. You can do that, yes. It is a contact. C certainly, ma'am. We'll have it processed as soon as possible. I knew I could count on you, lovelies. I hope to see you too soon so we can get this closed. Just like that, transaction over and done with. My mind's still reeling after, uh, even after they've left. Other letting agents would kill to have clients like them. Part of me feels lucky about the fact no lengthy negotiations, no sudden change of minds, just talk, signatures, few handshakes here and there, and we're done. I hope they die a painful death. I mean, they did give me money, which I did like. They can stay alive as long as I get that cash. Give me that Skrilla. Give me that Skrilla. Okay. The other part. Well, a second ago, we sold a haunted prom property to two innocent clients. Eh, I mean, one's, one's definitely like a murder pervert. And the other is kind of an asshole. Also, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Ooh, ooh, scoozy, scoozy. It's like cool, like, it's like... Arty, uh, arty, uh, cartoon scene. This guy? Oh, there's a real ass boy there. That's a real ass boy right there. That's a real ass boy in that. This, this is, this is a real ass boy. This is just real. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing there, Joseph? What are you doing? What the fuck? Why is there a real ass boy in there? Who the real ass? Okay. Sure, the commission's big. Big enough to continue funding Papa's treatment and hospitalization. Big enough to pay for all four of my younger siblings' schooling. Heck, and keeping me away from instant, noodles, uh, from instant noodle diet for months. I don't have to go back to the mansion as well once the deal has been closed, much to my sanity's relief. But knowing that something's in there, and we gave it to the good couple despite that, never mind, I say fuck it and go about my day. Oh, Isabella, the things you do to sell a house and get money. Papa won't be happy with that. At least I have good news to tell the next time I call home. The little lie I told Mama's morning isn't a lie anymore. Well, they're something. One of them's a magical pervert! So how does it feel? How does what feel? Your first big multi-million pound sale, silly. I know you've been with us for years, but this has got to be memorable for you. Memorable is an understatement, Rose. Come on, show some enthusiasm. Yeah. They gave us a bonus, too. Aside from the commission and the other bonus boss promised. Mm. What are you going to do with it? Uh, I don't know. Send it home, probably? All of it? Not everything, of course. Most of it. I'll leave some for my living expenses. Listen here, Isabella. I'll teach you something I should have told you before we ended your training. She sings an arm over my shoulders and leans in closer to my ear, as though she's about to share a big secret. It's okay to celebrate from time to time. Is she right? Like, do you send them to send to your family? But like, just like, give yourself a little. You you did a thing. Give yourself a little break. I don't get it. It's simple. Go yeah. out. Do something for yourself. Throw a party and treat your friends to free food. Like, just get get yourself like something nice. Get yourself like. The fuck, like a fucking like 3DS, I don't know. Here's a new game for your PlayStation. I don't, I don't know what you do. I don't know what your thing is. Didn't you say the last one's some sort of tradition back at home for you? Hello, this is practically a done deal. Uh, isn't throwing a party a bit excessive? Your call. I won't say no to an invitation, by the way, in case you really are planning to throw one. A few drinks would be nice too, thank you very much. I don't think my apartment's big enough for that. You could always move? Bloody hell, you're working in real estate. I think I'll pass. That's too much of an unnecessary expense for me. But I did promise Becca free lunch in case the sale goes well. You go do that. Hold on a sec. She quickly- I forgot that I had to read. She quickly removes herself from me to answer the phone on her desk. Her tone shifts from playful to professional in the span of a few seconds. Today? Not a problem, ma'am. I could bring you a copy of the contract if... Must be another client. Nothing surprising there. She's one of BRC's top agents, no matter how modest she appears. Saleswoman through and through. I, on the other hand, have very little knack for it. Of course, I learned eventually. I had to. But someone else will, without a doubt, do a better job. 
Once, though, in a drunken stupor, Rose told me a story of what could have been. Years ago, wide-eyed, young, and brimming and with yet-to-be-filled dreams and ambitions, she was a term or two away from a nursing degree. Out of courtesy, I never pressed on the matter further. But perhaps it's where the sense of fondness started. A small connection due to one similar experience in our respective lives, of goals we both let pass us by because of the circumstances we're in. I'd be happy to discuss this over tea, ma'am. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. New client? Reassigned. Have you heard from Mark and all? Not since the first visit to the mansion. Motherfuckers just goddamn it. Wait, what? Did Mark go to the mansion? Why? No news from the HR yet? None at all. Boss thinks he ran away. Yo! I doubt it, though. He's too much of a wimp for that. Mm. There must be another reason. <sighs> Who knows? Anyway, I've got to meet this one. I'll see you later. She throws a wave over her shoulder as she rushes out of the office. The lu lunchtime bell sounds shortly after, followed by the chatter of fellow agents also heading out for a much-needed break. Ordinarily, there's no time for me to go out, but oversleeping didn't allow me the, the luxury of packing my own lunch today. If one considers taking an instant noodle cup from the pantry, packing a lunch. Time to make good on the promise I made to Becca, I suppose. Maybe invite Zack and Ash, too. Well, in the end, only Becca and Zack could come. Okay, I'm gonna have to... Flap. I'm gonna have to call it there. I'm gonna have to call it there. Because I need to make food. Like, I feel like if a bunch of people are disappearing from your company, you're like, hmm, let's check on this, you know? Let's give this a little chizzity chizzity check. But no, no, no. Not not these motherfuckers. These guys are just like, yeah, fuck you guys. Well, I guess I guess it's death time. I guess it's death time to us all. Whatever. Whatever. Um, but yes, I'm gonna have to call it for today. Um, I am so happy. Thank you again, Lily, for all oh, these Oh my god, I'm gonna have to go through them and see what we got going on. Oh, look at them get gay. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. If you, you're watching and you've not followed, you do the whole follow thing. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We have to stop for today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But we're going to be back at this. We're going to be, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do more. 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 Because it's Spooktober and this is a spooky game. This is perfect. It's perfect. It's Spooktober. Um, but yeah, if you're watching, not follow, just do the follow thing and we can get more of this good spookness. Um, also, if you want, you can subscribe. I want to wait for my sub goal. This is another moment. Okay. Um, you get cute little team you see in chat. You make me real happy. And uh, you get a little star and you get like the special Discord server. And I just like you better. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, maybe it's true. You don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, Lord. Um, other things, other things, other things. Oh, you can find me other places. You can find me um, if you go to the description or to the chat now. And there are links to all my things. It's my YouTube, my Steam, my Instagram, my Twitter, my DF Cured. Um, and last but not least, if you want, uh, you can go again, chat, description. I can find uh, where you can do do a donate at me. Just like, eh? Uh, like, like the blue to Satan, it gives you a little name on the little thing. Uh, that was it. I didn't have much more of a pitch. I don't have more of a pitch. Um, but no, thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for coming in and playing this game with me. I'm so excited. Um, I'm gonna poop. Probably just gonna poop myself, huh? I'm not like, it's just, it's just probably what's gonna happen. I wish it wasn't. I wish it wouldn't. But it probably will. Anyway, I love you all. Hope you're having a great time, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.